Welcome back to beautiful Portland, Oregon and Glendevere for the final round of the Portland Open presented by Dynamic Discs. Sitting with an eight-stroke lead, Valerie Mondohano, who is looking to put her stamp on the disc golf world with her second Elite Series win of the year. Can she bring it home? You'll find out live on the Disc Golf Network. And there she is with Alexis Mondohano, who missed the cut, so she'll get to walk with her sister today. Walk, caddy, yeah. advise. Yeah. What a great partner to have by your side yeah, as you're playing this all-important fourth round. Yeah. Is she going to join the conversation as one of our elites, elite players in the field? It kind of feels like it. Well, looking at the way she's been playing this entire weekend, it's hard to find fault. Her throwing form is beautiful. It's so consistent. Mm -hmm. Her putting form is beautiful. It's so <laughs> consistent. I mean, the only question yeah. is, why hasn't she been winning everything to this point? Yeah. She finally put it together, <laughs> playing smart. Absolutely. You gotta love it. Welcome to the booth in Milwaukee. <laughs> I am Ian Anderson, sitting next to the Hall of Famer, five-time world champion, Elaine King. Mm -hmm. Let's check out some Val highlights. Oh, please. There are a lot to choose from. Round one, we were over on Blue Lake. Hole 14, oh, this one almost threw it in for Eagle. Oh gosh, this was such an amazing shot. High, spiking in, and spiked in right on the target. <laughs> the woman is accurate. And then lots of great putts. Just so many putts from circle's edge, beyond circle's edge. And she finished with six straight birdies on day one. Charge up the board. That's wow. her second shot on hole 17. Such a difficult hole. And this finish on 18 was, this was crazy. 70 feet outside circle two. It was just insane. But six birdies in a row to finish. And came out the next day looking solid. And that, that you saw was probably the worst putt of the day she made being kind of high. Mm -hmm. But putting her drives really accurately, giving herself a chance. Seems like she's got such a high floor to her game. Absolutely. I, you know, I have no form critique for her. Everything she does, it's either right on or just ever so slightly off. This shot was right oh. on. This turning over shot, getting between all those trees somehow, and you couldn't get closer to the basket. Only the second or third birdie of the day on that one. And then more good putting. And the putting is what set her apart from the field. She gained something like seven strokes on the putting circle as opposed to everybody That's else right. in the that, field. That strokes gained on the putting, yep. So this is the a short list of players that won multiple Elite Series in the same year. I'm sure you would be on here, Corver would be on here if we had him back in the day. Well, Des Redding, Val Des Jenkins. Redding, yep, yep. But Looking at the modern series, uh -huh. National Tours and DGPT series, there have only been four players who've won more That's than really one event in a year. That This is so interesting. Um, and for Val to make that list, that puts her with world champions. It's, her chances look good with an eight-stroke lead, but a couple weeks ago we watched a nine-stroke lead disappear pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, ever so <laughs> slightly. Uh, but that was then, and this is now. And she is trying to win this thing. Portland Open Trophy, brought, made by our friends, Andrew Rich at Orbital Creations. You can head over to their marketplace on Disc Golf United if you want to get some trophies for your tournaments. Let me tell you, I love these wood burn trophies. Did, did you show your mini, too? He, he makes minis, too. It's hard to see. Something but the wood burn trophies, Lynn, let me tell you, these touring pros find it difficult to manage the huge trophies that the oh. clubs get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And to have a trophy like that that's not breakable, fits um, in your suitcase, you can hang it in your van. You could put Welcome it in your bag as a good luck charm. Exactly. I think it's actually like a fairway driver, too. Disc. Looks like a, I want to guess a T bird or a fire bird. of the FPO division. Let's make some noise. Mid range? I think so. Rock. Up first on the box, sponsored by Neptune Discs and hailing from Richmond, Virginia. Let's make some noise for Natalie Ryan. <laughs> Intimidating tee shot on one for Ryan. Elaine, talk about what you're seeing oh, on the scores so here for one. Scary, so scary. 
hole one is playing as the Off most difficult team, hole. Sponsored by disc craft. She would like to thank everyone out here to support female disc golf. Thank you so much. <laughs> playing out of Pensacola, Florida, and five-time world champion Paige Pierce. <laughs> Great drive, and that's exactly what you have to do. You have to throw it forward, but yet put enough turn on it that it doesn't reach out of bounds. Representing Team Flight Towel and throwing in of a champion discs from Rosebud, Arkansas. Give it up for Cat Merch! Yeah! First look at Cat Merch this weekend. Everybody's stoked at home, I'm sure. She is an entertainer. Throw some amazing shots a great idea on this difficult hole one to throw a sidearm if you have the distance. Players have to travel at least 260 feet around the corner and get over a golf green and an mm. oh, and Did over it. that, which she didn't quite manage to. Oh, That's yeah. Sand Trap acts as a hazard. Your reigning disc golf pro tour champion throwing disc craft discs from Beacon, New York. Let's hear it for Missy. Gannon! It needs to keep enough of that turn so it doesn't head out of bounds, but that looks nice and safe. They are off. So Ann Dyke is on the ground. We'll be checking with Zoe here in just a, little, a few moments. Well, I expect her to tell us that it's windy because we can see from the banners yeah. that it's definitely windy. Perhaps a more favorable wind on hole number one as these players looked like they had a lot less trouble. Oh, I wonder. Getting the disc to be over the golf green. Maybe just a lesson learned from yesterday. It could be... The landing zone is kind of tough, as you can see from the drone. That's an enormous golf green. I don't think I've ever seen a golf green that big. Have you? <laughs> it's up there. And then you've got that sand trap. to If you get a, properly across the golf green, the sand trap can still snag you. And then, of course, there's that bush, which is just about where a lot of players like to aim. So difficult low landing zone on hole one and they were your can of current conditions and now we have zoe and dyke on the ground we're going to send it on to portland and check in with zoe hi zoe and dyke here with the disc golf network reporting live from glendevere golf course here for the portland open we're here for sunday's final round fpo coverage live what an exciting day. We are going to have some action unfold, not only on the course, but with the weather. As you can see right now, we're having just kind of a calm moment, patches of blue sky, but the wind is already up to between 12 and 17 mile an hour gusts, and we do have quite a bit of rain in the forecast. Now, being in the Pacific Northwest, we all know that if you wait 20 minutes, the weather could change and everybody's crossing their fingers. However, we've all got ponchos, raincoats, and umbrellas locked and ready to be unloaded. <laughs> but here we go, Valerie with a huge lead this morning, and let's watch the coverage unfold right here at Glendevere Golf Course. Thanks for that, Zoe. We are looking at Cat Merch taking casual relief from that water, Elaine, hopefully. Yeah, you don't want to be stepping in a big puddle on hole one. No. <laughs> There's a lot of golf to play with wet shoes, so uh, both from a safety point of view, footing point of view, she's allowed to take it straight back. Cat throwing three. We'll need a big one to save for, probably playing for five. Sticking with her game plan of taking the sidearm, having the disc travel away from out of bounds, and it is so close on that left side of the fairway. Yep. Somebody got a stick to grab that? Come on, somebody help Cat, cat out. I've got an umbrella. Use there, it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I think this is from before. Oh, this is live. Okay. 
I get a... Oh, maybe she's thinking about taking a provisional? So Paige just called Jeff Spring. Quick call to yeah. uh, the series director. Yeah. And that's a good idea. If you're unsure, check with the tournament official. If she was required to take it in that puddle, it looks like she was getting prepared to just stomp right in there yeah. and do that. Looking down at one's fairway, you can see it pinches in for those second shots. It's a scary second shot. Not only does it pinch in, but the ground then gives way after the basket so anything thrown a little bit far can skip can roll and get out of bounds missy gannon second shot on one needs to hold that turn and it does not yes it does appear to be holding Ooh. it enough far enough to get out of that little bubble where it where it gets a little wider yeah, I think there's a little bit of an optical illusion as the out-of-bounds comes in and out and in and out. Yeah. But nicely navigated. Oliva for birdie. We saw a lot from that, that woman yesterday. Made some incredible shots, incredible putts. Ryan. Throwing two on one. And that sets her up for a rare birdie look. It does, there yeah. There have been no birdies on hole one so far. None? None. Wow. It's like it's playing a full stroke over par last time I checked. Paige Pierce. Booming drive. Can't That's she take advantage? Sets her up beautifully to attack the green. And it's just a matter of how hard do you throw it. Needs it to come back a little left. That's a runnable putt. Nice shot from Pierce. It's a runnable, but the question is, do you want to run it? She's going to today from the chase card. She's running everything, right? It's Paige I, Pierce. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. Yeah. Cat Merch. Should be next to act. This will be the fourth throw for Cat once she gets there. Great perspective from the drone cam down at this beautiful Glendevere property. If you can get your tee shot out 300 feet or more, then the basket definitely is reachable on your second shot. Merch pitching up. We'll drop in a five. Smart play. Taking her medicine nicely after the tee shot. Well, you're only losing strokes to a third of the field if you take a bogey on hole one. Good points. Even our leader had struggles with this one yesterday, taking a bogey. The whole lead card had struggles with this yesterday. <laughs> right. there, there was no pars. It was That's right. bogey or worse. But as Zoe says, there's a rare moment of calm on the course right now, and this second card taking advantage of it. Birdie look. Marked as circle one for Yannon. Quite a bit of recoil on the koozie, isn't there? A little ski ball action there. Paige Pierce. For the first birdie of the day. The way that she's facing the basket, it's just dropped off behind it, so she needs to hit. Mm. Solid hit. Hard to make yourself throw it high enough when you're looking at that yeah. gaping nothingness behind the basket. At least it didn't go anywhere. It's a drop in par. Ryan, let's see if she can snag the first birdie of the day. That's a negative. There was a lot correct with that shot. Not sure from this angle what went wrong. Kind of Might have been a bit low. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we like skittered off the tray. Gannon to save par.
Missy. Disappointing result. Missy had a Missy. She did have a Missy. She wasn't Mickey there. Merch. Bogey. That's so unmissy like too. That is definitely one of her strengths. Two, warming up on one, your leader, Valerie Manduano, takes the tee on the other side of this break. And this tournament coverage is sponsored by Fortnite. A new season starts this week. Check it out in the link in the YouTube description. I know, I was like, what is, what's epic about it? Why you want to make it epic? Like... Whether you know it or not, you have a brand and we have discs. Let's put them together and make something really cool. We've got plenty of discs and are ready to stamp or Dimax them however you'd like. Isn't it expensive? Well, guy who asks convenient questions, at Dynamic Discs, you can see what's available and fill out the form to see what it'll cost you before you even order. Sometimes I fill it out just for fun, because you can watch the numbers go. Anyways, head to dynamicdiscs.com slash custom to place your custom order and grow your brand, whatever that is. Just kept telling myself, you know, one shot at a time, just worry about your shot and not anything else. What a oh, shot. Mine. This Dickerson. You can't control what anybody else does, so. That was incredible. He needed it most. Two-time major champion, Chris Dickerson. The Portland Open is brought to you by Dynamic Discs. Be dynamic. There was this kid, and we can call him a kid because he's 14 years old, who was going to be swinging on the swing sets up until two minutes was called. He'd fly off the swings, run to the tee box, and then he was going to beat you. And that was David Wick. Superboy David Wick. This little kid, he's just stout. I mean, he grew up with basically every single distance record that you could possibly have. He is a power machine. You know, his game impresses me all the way across the board. Just an insane talent. He was just built to throw a disc. They usually say putt for dough, but that man, that man throws for dough. He certainly does. And um, until he graduated, he lived close to me in High Point, North Carolina. Oh, really? oh. And he's got an engineering degree, I believe, oh, of nice. some type. So should be a good conversation yeah, next time can, you talk to him. We can engineer it out. That's on Monday on the Disc Golf Network. 
subscribe and check that out. I'll be watching that one tomorrow. Welcome back to the 2022 Portland Open presented by Dynamic Discs. We are here for the final round of the lead card of the FPO division. Let's make some noise. Can you let's make Mason whispering in her ear, right? You got this. Sponsored by Dynamic Discs out of Universal City, Texas. Let's make some noise for Valerie Mondu Hano. Landed just about where it did yesterday. <laughs> just far enough. Free open champion, sponsored by Latitude 64 from Cincinnati, Ohio. Let's give it up for Rebecca Cox. <laughs> Rebecca can hold on. This will be her best Elite Series finish. Third, the case right now. We're all holding our breath. Oh my gosh. Oh, it was so close to the tree that it was so close to the hazard. Throwing in above champion discs out of Los Angeles, California, your reigning masters champion. Give it up for own Scoggins. Oh, Scoggins. Rocking her Helix hat. Shout out to my friends in Palm Desert. She wastes no time. She's all right always ready to throw <laughs> and throwing safe I hope anyhow I couldn't see the landing but she was aiming for the safe side sponsored by Squatch Bags let's make some noise from Sioux Falls South Dakota your two time and reigning world champion Katrina Allen Woo! Not many players could throw oh. it that high. Oh no! She threw it so far it was out of bounds. Wow. She threw it down to the bottleneck. That is certainly the farthest throw we have seen. By far. Like 100 foot plus. I mean, hopefully close enough she can salvage a par. I would, I would think so. From way up there, yeah. she's got nothing between her and the basket. Zoe. How was last night? What did everybody else get up to? I heard there was a little, little KJ USA concert. <laughs> we definitely were entertained last night by Mr. Kevin Jones. Again, just like in the, the uh, press conference, I had introduced him with the bass in his bones. This guy has talent. He, <laughs> he performed an amazing show. And I would say most tour card holders, both men and women, were there just dancing and jumping and bouncing to the beat. It was a fun Saturday night and a great music venue. I love that. We're having those a lot more at the Disc Golf Pro Tour this year. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, the women, of course, don't get to party all night because they have to get up early <laughs> to yes. tea in the morning. I expect the men will be hanging out there till uh, the bitter end. Yeah. You can sleep in. Somebody who was there last night. Paige Pierce on two. She's getting quite a reputation for being a dancer. <laughs> she loves a good music festival. Two is downhill and it books hard to the right. Ooh, nice. Great shot. Just getting one safe on hole two was a challenge <laughs> yesterday. It really was. Scoggins back on one's fairway, throwing her second. 
Yeah, I think she hit that tree, which is why she didn't get much applause, but she is in a safe position, and that's the first challenge in hole one. And the good flag comes out from our spotter. Ahead on the course is Hansen. We see most people doing the straightforward route. Ella, of course, has the power to have the big hyzer, and it looks like she put it really nicely up there in the circle. What a luxury to have. Ryan. Outside circle one. Bogey look for Ryan. Oh, my. Whoa, that is a pressure bogey putt. After missing the short birdie look on one. Monduano, the drive barely safe. Here's the second. It's got a nice turn to it. She's just keeping it safe. So smart. Walk away with a par. You're not losing strokes to anyone. Two. Pierce, four, two. Boom. Clean start for Paige. It was almost a two for two start. Well, I think you consider a whole, a whole one. If you get a four, a par, you are doing just fine. Rebecca Cox, who oh, finds a tree, but it will stay safe at least. So, Rebecca will playing for par from there. Yeah, no worries. The green of hole one is so scary that, you know, even players who get down there have a think about whether they're going to putt or not. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, what we've seen is some players who do try to get their putt and miss, can roll away, can skip away, and there is out of bounds all behind the basket. I saw Maria Oliva get a nasty roll away yesterday. Katrina Allen, after that monster drive, will take her meter in and hope to salvage a par. At just 2.30 left on the hole. Sidearm is a nice, safe way to go. The throw tends to check up and not travel down the hill. Wonderfully executed. Just beautiful. The rest of the women are all over 100 feet from the pin, so we should see three layups coming up from the rest of our final grouping. I feel like if someone's going to make a charge and challenge Val from the lead card, it feels like Kat would be the one. Well, she had, certainly has the ability to score on this course. Right, with her roller game, her putting game. Absolutely. And she just had a, a really terrible start yesterday. She was. Through nine holes, even. She was six over. Right. And then cleaned it up on the back nine, just hit the reset button somehow. So we're already seeing her come up to a much cleaner start on hole one despite the out-of-bounds throw. I shouldn't discount Rebecca, though. She was making some great putts yesterday. Oh, that's going to hurt, though. Oh, no. That's... And it's oh. so easy to go just a little bit far, and it just carries. That's a long putt for five. Circle two. <laughs> I guess the grass is a lie right there. Back to the fairway for Scoggins throwing three. One fifteen in for own. Well executed. Tough to get the pace perfect on that shot, isn't it, it? You can see it's sloping down all the way, and if you're too short, that's almost worse than being too long. <laughs> Except if it goes out of <laughs> bounds, it it's just bounds. It, it seems that there's no winning. But the closer you are on your second shot, the easier it is to get that disc where you want it, just in the bullseye, preferably. Mondu Hano. little wide and a little long. She did the same thing yesterday. She overcooked it a little bit yesterday. 
That's a tester for par. And Valerie did have a putt from just about the same place yesterday, and she made it. Obviously, you're a lot more comfortable putting uphill because the risk is less if you miss. Rebecca grabs a meter in, and she'll have a putt for five. Just outside the circle is what our Bushnell is telling us, 34 feet. Solid hit. Very Good nice yep. settle right after the hit. Could have gone wild after that. You never know what's going to happen on those raised baskets when you hit metal. And those koozies are very bouncy, as we saw with Missy yeah. Gannon's putt. Yeah. Well, Nathan Queen, Rebecca Cox, they'll be in Champs Chumps on Thursday out at Milo McIver. Well, they're both champs, just to be They are both champs. Clear. Oh, my, me and my friends will be the chumps. That'll be on the Disc Golf Network. Subscribe if you'd like to get first access to that. Manduhano to save par. Big putt. 32 feet considerably uphill to a raised basket. It was a little high, but it was very successful. That's a great, great start to her round. Maybe. Not that she needed any putting confidence, but maybe that'll help. You always need putting confidence. <laughs> you, you really do. You know, every day it's like something new. Scoggins. Weebles, wobbles, and it falls down for par. Yeah, she managed this hole extremely well. Allen, par as well. After the OB drive, gotta love that result. Not losing any strokes to the field. And that is a double for Cox. And this tournament coverage is sponsored by Fortnite. A new season starts this week. You can check it out. There is a link in the description of the YouTube. I'm here to rescue your cat. Oh, thank goodness. Oh. Your cat is safe and sound. Thank you so much. The Dynamic Discs Retriever is an essential tool for just about any round of disc golf. Oh no, somebody help. Oh, well that's my cue. The Dynamic Discs Retriever keeps your discs in your bag longer. Paige Pierce for birdie. This looks like about a 45 footer. This is for two straight, hole three. Mm. Just no drama when she throws. <laughs> she says stay up and you know it's in trouble. Corver for birdie. From one five time to another on hole five. Wow, that was a great putt. Look at the wind oh my. behind her. This is We haven't seen this this week in Portland yet. Well, Zoe warned us the wind was coming. Mm -hmm. 
Pull two's T with your leader. Great correction from yesterday. Yesterday she underturned it, it snaked out of bounds, and then bad things happened from there. Mm -hmm. Here she's going to have a nice born three, one would think, unless, unless she's tempted to go for the putt again. Yeah. We shall see. Alan. And don't look now, but Maduhano has a nine stroke lead. Look at this drift. Beautiful. What control. As God. soon as I said, what control? <laughs> Just, she's not off by much so far, but no, unfortunately. I, I'm really surprised she didn't go sidearm. She's got a beautiful sidearm, and it is such a, a big right turn, and it's going downhill. Mm -hmm. So the disc wants to fade out of whatever Anheuser you give on it. Own so, birdied it yesterday. And with a throw presumably similar to that. And you like your chances from there. In the circle. Yeah, if... if Throw a sidearm if you've got one. Mm -hmm. Rebecca getting the note. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot of sidearms out of Rebecca yesterday. So obviously she's been working on her sidearm and just feeling very comfortable with it. That needs to come back a whole lot of distance, though. And unfortunately just directed mm -hmm. uh, in the wrong, with the wrong aim. Ahead to Paige Pierce. Full four. Sneaky from Pierce. He's got a pretty look. Great drive. You can go straight forward on that hole or around to the side like we saw Hanson do. Maria Oliva. Pitching up for a drop in birdie. Count that one. There's Manduhana with her nine-stroke lead. I have my grad night party, party on that boat. <laughs> oh, so fun, those river boats. Uh -huh, yeah. She's got a nine-stroke lead, but Paige Pierce had that equalized before she went on to win by four. Last, just a couple weeks back. There was intense drama two weeks ago as Paige played well, but just couldn't quite get the birdies, and... Natalie Ryan was getting every birdie in sight and mm -hmm. caught up by nine strokes. And then a hole 17 was the decider. Yeah. Uh, but we've seen quite a bit of, you know, shake up like that in the women's divisions in the final round. Even when there was a, a good lead, nothing is certain. Merch. Beautiful. Taking the big hyzer around the first tree. Back to Rebecca Cox, throwing three. There's a hazard sand trap so close behind the pin there that players are tending to lay up. Pierce, the birdie look on four. There she is. And you know, yesterday her putts just were ever so slightly off. They were low. All, I guess she got a couple band hits too, didn't she? Yeah, she did, and she got some to the side, and today the putter is certainly looking much back, much like its usual form, Yeah. which for Paige means hitting the basket in a good way. To look down at two's green. Your gallery and final grouping, Katrina Allen readying her third after the OB drive. Taking a peek, seeing that this is runnable. Yeah, so the question is, if I miss, where is it most likely to land? In the hazard. <laughs> <laughs> was the answer to that question, I guess. Taking her medicine and taking a four are Cox and Allen. Got birdie looks for Maduhano and Scoggins. Maduhano, well out circle two. Well, yesterday she threw out of bounds. She went for the putt. She missed. It went into the hazard, and then she missed from there. Afterwards, she said that Mason told her not to go for the putt, the original putt, but she wanted to. <laughs> she wants to again. Zoe did that one nestle in bounds. It looked like it did. 
That did nestle just about three feet behind the basket, so Valerie will just be tapping in a par. Right, big improvement on yesterday. Scoggins for a stroke on the final grouping. That's solo second for own Scoggins. Boom. And she's going to take the strokes where she can get them. Mm -hmm. As she says, she is not as big a thrower as the other women who are her closest competitors, and she just needs to play cleanly. Alan bogey drop in, Cox the same. And Maduhana will come along to, for the drop in par. I'm just fascinated by the psychology of Val going for that putt with the danger behind it, yeah. with um, the miss she had yesterday. No miss there for Cat Merch. Mm -hmm. And this course does give the women a bunch of opportunities for birdies. And in fact, Valerie got nine, the most birdies yeah. of any woman, but there are a lot of eights and sevens and sixes. Our course designers, Jeff Spring and Dustin Keegan, doing a great job out there, making this a really fun, attackable, watchable course. Absolutely. Uh, you'll see players using their forehand as well as their backhand on both drives and approach shots. And uh, yes, I love that Keegan quote of like, make your own adventure. Yeah. And we'll be seeing that as we go to some of the holes where there are multiple paths. And as well, depending where your drive lands, you have to work your way through the trees and, and no shot will be the same one round to the next. Here are some Glendabeer fun facts. Entirely new course from last year, hosts the Nike Cross Country Nationals. Beautiful place to run around in. Your lead designer, Jeff Spring, Dustin King, and your co designer, Jeff Spring, also designing the iconic Vermont courses that you love so much. I do love them. That's one of my favorite places to go. Is I've actually never heard a bad word about either of them no. from anybody. <laughs> well, they shouldn't. Yeah. Scoggins, T of three. And here's a make your own adventure hole. Sidearm approach, but not turned over enough for Scoggins. Maduhano. Yeah, looks to be a, yep, a little yeah. bit too much turned over. Allen. And it looks like we've got some sunshine, which was a really unexpected weather condition today in Portland. Uh, we're a little bit frozen here, but uh, I'm sure that uh, the back room control guys are working on this and we'll have this sorted out as soon as possible. Now interestingly, Valerie Montahano did not miss shots like this yesterday. She was just clean through everything. I was gonna say. I'm struggling to think of where she hit a tree that wasn't just like the last tree mm -hmm. possible. So it'll be interesting to watch her scramble game and also just the psychology of being back here when previous days she was just way up in the circle for a putt. Mm. That is kind of her, I've noticed her nervy miss from time to time was that yank just a little right. So hopefully she'll make a correction and get it going. Probably good the last three rounds at just not trying too hard. Just mm -hmm. letting her form be her form, focusing on throwing correctly. Here she is, 150 into the pin. A little bit of work left to do, uphill, through some trees. Yeah, the uphill and the accuracy will provide the biggest challenge, it's not the distance. No problem at all. The way she putts, that should be a par. Goggins, own 130 out. Is there 
husband, Justin Scoggins, back on the bag for own. Or the cart, as the case may be. Mm, there you go. Technically, Elaine, it's a bag and a cart. It's both. Yeah. <laughs> Approach there for own. She should make that putt. Top three putter in the game, easy. Fives T with Pierce. It's that Surge SS. And this is just a big old hole, but downhill on that first shot. It's just such a fun shot. This is going really far. Too far? No, just short enough. Well, you can oh hear Paige yelling in the background, giving instructions to her disc. Get down, get down. Or get up, or what, something. <laughs> something. Rebecca Cox, she's in circle two. Putting for birdie. It was in and then it was out. I was in there for so long. It just jumped right back out. Yeah, I wonder if it, the back of the disc got kind of held up on the nub. Yeah. She's got this nose down style, and that can tend to happen unless you push it far enough forward. Scoggins to save par. Catches the last one. There's something about the wobble, though, that yeah. makes her putts fall. I think it's I think it's real, right? Oh, oh, it absolutely is because it's not like it's hitting at the wrong angle. It's hitting at several angles. At all the angles. <laughs> Alan for birdie. Oh, she is tied with Paige Pierce in third place. Nine back of Manduano, who looks to save par. A short putt, but yet somehow an important putt. Yeah. Got to keep those good putting feelings going. Well, you don't want to get yourself a bogey on a hole that you birdied the last round. No. There's something psychological like about that. that. Oh, rolling back a replay of this Cox putt. Yeah, it just jumped on the rim. Hit a bunch of chains, but was unfortunately not going far enough forward for it to really catch. Pierce. Second shot on five after that monster drive. She'll have Eagle. to watch her follow through. <laughs> Eagle Elaine? <laughs> well, she did it yesterday, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Went long. Oh, she's way left today. Oh, that's not good. Not good at all. Just pulled that too much, trying to get the distance. Here are King's so, Keys, brought to our friends at blackinkdisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Well, as uh, Paige just demonstrated, keeping it in the course <laughs> is your number one goal. There's so much out of bounds here. Hitting your landing zone is particularly important for the par fours and par fives. The landing zones sometimes are very small. And that brings us to number three, choose when to be aggressive. Sometimes you're rewarded, but other times you're not, and you need to know when is when. Wise words. Natalie Ryan on the same as Pierce. Hole five. Throw two. Wow. Putting for eagle is Natalie Ryan. So that found some good space down have. there just <laughs> above the pond. Let's see if they're giving her circle one. Uh, circle two, according to you, Disc. Looking down at Katrina Allen on the tee of four. And this is another birdieable hole. Katrina, much better start 
today than she had yesterday. Mm -hmm. Just looking like we would expect Katrina Allen to play this course, being confident, aggressive, using the airspace where it's available. Scoggins. Smashing a flex up the fairway. It's a little too low to get all the way there, though. Madujano. It's a little bit short. That big tree looks like it's right in the way. This is 320 feet uphill, so it does take a big throw to get there. Rebecca has slid back to fifth. Needs to get it going here. And the Ooh. disc is trying to Look come back, and it manages. That was awesome. Great opportunity for Rebecca to grab one of those three over par strokes she has on the day so far. We're going to roll back a Zuka replay of that Rebecca Cox drive. I didn't think this thing was going to swing as hard as it did. Well, Zoe has told us that there is a tailwind from the tee. Oh. So that may have helped it. Stable as you up. go uphill, the wind pushes uphill with you if you're throwing uphill, so it's actually kind of floats the disc a bit farther. Because I certainly thought Rebecca's disc was going to toss down faster than it did. Absolutely. We'll take a quick break on the Disc Golf Network while they make their way up the fairway. Back to the action in Glendevere in just a few moments. Most memorable moment with a DX Rock was well, it happened right here at Oak Grove. I got my first hole in one with a DX Rock with an orange one that was about this color when I first got it. I threw that thing all the time until I got my first ace, and that's what really got me hooked on the DX Rock was how straight I could make it fly, how well I could control it, and how predictable it was. Mondujano with a long birdie bid and a giant tree in the way. An enormous tree in the way. She can just see the edge of the basket. It's 60 feet on this bid. That was Real. very <laughs> impressive. Wow. Drawing metal from edge of circle two with a huge obstruction. Back to five for Pierce, throwing four. Looks like that will be par for Paige mm -hmm. on hole number five. Looking down at Forge Green. Allen with a birdie look. This will be back to back for Katrina. And move her within eight. This is much more like we thought we'd be seeing Yesterday. Katrina Allen attack this course. That slow start yesterday is a thing of the past. Rebecca Cox, a birdie look. As your reigning Disc Golf Pro Tour champion looks on in the background. very nerve-wracking watching your significant other play. <laughs> it really is. I can't imagine. Because you, you feel like you're playing with them. Uh, sure. And that putt for Rebecca, she's probably looking right back at the gallery, too. 
adding some nerves, I would imagine. Mondujano, no problem with the par. Scoggins, par as well. And one more. Allen, stroke on the final grouping. Ahead on five, Gannon. Third shot for Gannon. Beautifully played. Missy playing the hole to the right side, which many of the players will be doing. Eagle look for Ryan. This was in the circle, but does not convert. Chain brush, a little bit on the left side, it seemed. Yeah. Constellation prize is a drop in birdie. When you're putting uphill, the gravity gets the disc, so it is more likely to pull to the left. Combat that with a little more Annie on it or aim it yeah, left? Yeah, uh, you could do one of the two. What your preference is. Cool. Looking down at the tee of five. What a fun tee shot to throw on five. And Big downhill shot. 910 feet. <laughs> and uh, Paige was 40 long after it. two. Yeah, she was long after two. So it just tells you that down slope for the first throw really allows the disc to carry and carry and carry. I like where Katrina's actually going with this one. You have more airspace if you're off to the left, off the tee shot. You can throw like a flex shot. That's where we saw where, where Pierce was, you had to throw a pure turnover. Scoggins. Good distance to be at the bottom of that hill. Maduhano. What a cool shot from the drone cam. Thanks to Kyle. In the fairway safely. Yeah, it looks to be about 80 feet in front of Scoggin's shot. And now Rebecca. Nice low trajectory. I like the fact all these players released over to the right, knowing gravity would take the disc and pull it to the left. Over to seven, Corver's second. And you're not going to see it finish, but that is under the bucket. Huge improvement from yesterday oh, for yeah. Corver where she uh, did not make the Mando. Pierce, hole six. Didn't see the finish, did you, Elaine? No, I did not, but uh, someone in the crowd liked it. No, that's true. Hanson, over on. This is a big drive from Ella. See if she takes advantage. Also under the bucket, I am told. Such a big snap from Ella that was so low that you'd think it would ground out, but yeah. just somehow it kept going. It got stable just in time. Tons and tons of spin. A live look down Five's fairway. You can almost see the basket at the very top of your frame behind those trees. And the graphics on the right show how dangerous it is as you approach the green. We've got a golf green, we've got another golf green, and then we've got that pond. And the basket is up on a hill, so you need to hit with the correct angle so that your disc sticks rather than just smacking into it and rebounding into the water. Own second. A lot of players are laying up to the right of all of those hazards. That's where Own is aiming. Own still 700 feet to the pin. Good second shot there. Long birdie bid for Pierce. Hole six. 
Oh, that looked beautiful 90% of the way there. Hanson. That was the birdie. Anduhano. Right where she started the day with an eight-stroke lead. Not a bad place to be at all, but things are really heating up for who's going to finish on the podium mm -hmm. with her. Katrina, second on five. Cat 650 in. Smart play over there. Yeah, pulling it over to the right. Lots of inbound space there. Cat merch. Par putt for cat. Right. Ooh, when you're that far away from par, it's really nice to make your putt, sure isn't it? It is. Back to five's fairway for cox throwing two. 640. And that's really low, but it hits safe ground. And now Montejano, just one foot closer. Just fine. Gets Mason's approval. Yep. Paige Pierce, T of seven. 450 foot hole. You see there's a bit of a low ceiling right out of the gate. And you're going uphill. Oh, this is lovely. She pushed the ceiling of the canopy and got way up the hill. Great event for another birdie for Pierce. And after having quite a slow start to this tournament, she is solidly in fourth place and making a charge to a higher position on the podium. We have a clean two down today from Pierce. Let's see if she can put any kind of pressure on Maduhano, who's not a bad start, just par, 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 par. And considering the wind conditions, maybe that's not bad. I hear from Zoe the wind is starting to pick up. Mm -hmm. And as the wind picks up, I think these birdies, birdies are going to be harder for the players to achieve. Harder to get the drives accurate and definitely tougher time on the putting green. Owns third. Sneaks it over the water. <laughs> and she, look, she aimed on the low side where she didn't have any hill to contend with. That makes it more likely that the disc is going to ah. stick. <laughs> <laughs> Owen didn't bring any nuts, I guess. What a picturesque scene. Mondohano's third coming up. She will see 200 feet on that bush now. Tiny bit of uphill run. One big tree to contend with in front of her, plus another to the right, so she can't swing it out too much. Stand still if you can get the power is a great idea. That helps your accuracy, and yes, she had the power. In the circle for a birdie look for Manduhano, her first of the day if it goes in. Rebecca Cox or Allen next to act. Looks to be Allen. Either one's fine, I think. Better gonna carry. Back end's gonna beat down. You can hear Austin Hannum telling Kat that the side arm will have the wind carry, mm. but the backhand the wind would beat it down. 175 for Cat. Not bad. Rebecca Cox, 170 to the bucket. 
And she's going to have to dance around that huge Douglas fir right in front of her, just making the shot that little bit trickier to be able to manage the height, the angle. Very well done. No problem. Rebecca should snag birdie from there. That will be her first of the day. Currently in a tie for fifth with Oliva. Back to Pierce, her second on seven. Going putter for her second. Slippery footing, it looks like. Well, she's elected to stand and deliver, maybe uh, disking up. And if you don't have the footing, that's a very wise choice. Nicely inside circle one for Pierce. You like her chances to go three down through seven. Hansen on eight. Oh, wow. Past the bucket. And two. It's so easy when you're throwing downhill for the disc just to glide and glide and glide a little farther than you were counting on. And we saw yesterday several of the players were having a problem with these downhill holes where the basket was not at the bottom of the hill. Alan for birdie needs every one of these. Very confidently put in. That's a turkey for Katrina Allen after a one over two hole start. Owen with a birdie look. The result you expect when that woman picks up a putter. Hano with a good birdie make as well. She's on the board today. And Rebecca to get on the board. Is that a round of birdies? Yeah, it is. Nice done. Well played. Oliva for birdie. Ah. That is her first C1X miss of the day. As Natalie Ryan makes her approach shot with pinpoint accuracy. Beautifully done. Hansen went long on the approach on eight, comes back for birdie. Not as long as it looked. Not at all. Something about putting downhill makes you want to release low or put it a bit nose down. Can it from circle oh, wow. two? Huge make from Missy. Not the first we've seen from her. Let's look down at Six's tee pad as they're thrown into the trees on the right. Allen on the box. Is this one of these make your own adventure holes? Katrina Allen? Choosing the sidearm, but sort of the straight at it go. Yeah. 305 feet downhill. All of these women will be looking at this hole thinking birdie. <laughs> Scoggins. I think she may play it a little wider. Yep, she's taking the wide gap. That looks like it's tracking. Mm -hmm. Right on circle's edge for Scoggins. Manduhano. She'll need to navigate around that leaning tree.
Beautifully done. Fantastic. Back to back birdies for your leader coming up. Rebecca Cox, <laughs> what do you see? I saw Owen um, congratulating <laughs> yeah, nice. Val. What a wonderful card mate Owen is. The best. Take one Owen on every card, please. Rebecca Cox's drive is a little bit wide, but it does give her a chance. A patented park job. Valerie Mondujano. This woman can shape a shot. She made a little correction from yesterday where she landed farther out into the field, but got the patent on this one. Yes, she did. Here, thanks to our friends at Sunstein, the home of winning intellectual property. They take care of patent, trademark, NFT needs. Sunsteinlaw.com. Huge supporters of disc golf. Takes them a ton. Oliva, T of nine. Really well played. Again, low overhang that the players have to deal with on that hole. Paige Pierce. There's the birdie on seven. Boom. Clean scorecard. Making moves. Playing like Paige Pierce. She is. So low fourth for Pierce right now. Nine off your leader. Live look down it. Six is green. Rebecca Cox. Reading a circle two look for Birdie. And she was ever so off on the last one. Almost got it. Let's see if she can correct for this one. 52 feet. Ooh, good effort. And we didn't see Allen finish, but according to Bushnell, only 20 feet left on the hole. This is not pretty close. She took that straight line at it, yeah. and uh, the disc sort of went out of our vision at the very end. It's being hiding behind a tree. Oh, there it is, right there. Own. 34 foot look for Scoggins. Yeah. Own Scoggins with a seat to make. Birdie. Tied for second. Four birdies in a row for Katr Katrina Allen, world champion, came to play today. Rebecca Cox to save par. Sneaks that one in. Mondu Hano, drop in birdie and back to back for your leader. Gets the 15 down and back to an eight stroke lead. Let's check out one more look at this Mondu Hano drive. Laced. And it was a flip up. Out of her hand, it looked like it was heading towards the tree, but it flipped up and then gravity brought it back underneath the basket. They are on their way to seven. A quick break while they get there. Back in just a few. I would recommend the Envy to every single person that plays this golf. This is such a good throwing putter. If you don't have an Envy in your bag, I don't know what you're doing. The Envy is one of the most pure, straight flying putters. Comes out clean, can handle power, it can handle touch. It's just very versatile. It holds any line that you're really putting it on. It's so good. So good, it's so good.
Hallo, we're Kenna. We're a Dutch growing company. We love plants and we want to tell you some cool things about them. Just like humans, plants can communicate. They can sense when another plant is close. Plants look out for each other too. They warn neighbors about nearby threats by secreting substances. And studies have shown that plants love a good tune. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you too. Katrina Allen, T of seven. And it's a short par four, but as you can see, there's a huge hill. Yeah. And there is a low canopy just as you're exiting that initial tract of trees. Katrina finding a little bit of that canopy. Own getting under it and farther up the hill. It's a tough thing to do to keep the disc high enough to get under the canopy. <laughs> and maximizing distance. Yeah, you, you, it's the high and the low sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mondujano. Yep, low ceiling, high floor on that one. Makes for a narrow, perfect slot angle. Rebecca Cox. In case you're wondering why the players are choosing that narrow route, there are mandatories that force the players through the woods from the tee. Gotcha. And this is hole seven, our VII diameter apparel hole. You can grab some of those awesome shirts over on the Disc Golf Pro Tour Pro Shop. They can also make in your, your club shirts, tournament shirts. Oh, yeah. yeah. VII sponsors a lot of uh, player clothing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of VII shirts out there. I believe uh, Natalie Ryan wears one. Oh, nice. Alan. Throwing two after the short drive on seven. Can't she redeem herself? It's a little shy. David should update us on the distance here shortly. I'll let you know when he does. Paige Pierce. Second on eight. What a beaut. Pin high right, Maria Oliva, long look on nine. Up and over the rhododendron. Manuhano second on seven. Yep. Missing that tree was key, allows her to skip up into the circle. Did get an update from Katrina. She is 60 short. It's tough when you end up landing somewhere where you never practiced from. Right. And there's a hill. So <laughs> you don't know how hard to throw it. From the other side of the fairway on eight, we've got Gannon. It seems like an easier approach in for a right hand backhand. Oh, you yes, know? it was. She's demonstrated <laughs> yeah, how she... easy it is. It's just like that. Yeah, just throw a hyzer at it. Scoggins back to Sevens Fairway. Second shot. Yeah, you can see how hard these players are throwing oh. for something that looks easy just distance wise. Beats that tree and she's right in there for a really close putt. Merch. Approach on eight. Fantastic. It's easy to get in the bullseye from either side of the fairway, apparently. <laughs> Rebecca Cox, back to seven. Second shot coming up. She had that blistering drive up the hill, just getting that slice of good air <laughs> correctly, didn't she? Just perfectly. Inside line for Cox. Just inside circle. Ella Hansen putting for birdie on nine. Got a scuba? Uh, nah, just going to Annie. 
Come on, Ella, do your ultimate people <laughs> proud. Scuba that thing in there. Well, looking at the, the ground there, which didn't have much grass, I think that would have been dangerous. Paige Pierce with a great putt. Speaking of dangerous, this woman is uh, uh -huh. looking to be a little bit dangerous today, crawling up the scoreboard shot by shot. Allen, 60 feet out for her third on seven. That's fine. So there's a scuba, but there's also a scooby, right? I have heard of scoobies, and I must admit scuba, is that a variant of a scooby? So there's a, I think the scooby is the overhand, like, tomahawk-ish okay. shot, and the scuba is like a, a backhand roller thrown from your shoulder. Like the disc is resting on your shoulder, and you lay it down super quick. Do you know a snapper, Leo Pearson? Oh, yeah. So it's backhanding a yeah. disc upside down rather than forehanding it upside down. Kind of? You still have a regular grip, but it just rolls with. Oh, my goodness. Scoggins. Excuse us. Was she putting while we were talking? She was from 60 feet. <laughs> Nailed it. And that is the advantage of having this line drive putt that is flat and a little bit nose up. It just sails. It's on that chain plane for a long time. Rebecca Cox. Puts the birdie home. Maduhano. For a turkey. It's going to be just like yesterday. A little slow start and then just boom. It could well be. Uh, you know, she's driving well. She's putting well. Maybe just a, a couple of drives not as perfect as they were yesterday in the first few holes. But mm -hmm. I'm not seeing her putting stroke giving anything up. Katrina to save par. Yeah, Owen makes a 70-footer and doesn't even get a stroke on Val. Turkey for own as well. Let's roll back a Zucker replay of this Scoggins putt from distance. And she's only like 15% on the weekend, too, from Ooh. circle two. <laughs> but she found it right there. Get it, own. Thanks to Zuka for rolling back that replay. Own on every card. <laughs> telling you. That's your new motto. That's my, that's my new, new motto for the Pro Tour. Own taking second place. And the scores are stacked as we look down the row. And Missy Gannon has popped into the sixth place. So nice. She is two down today. Down at the Glendevere Clubhouse. Are they playing golf on the other side? Oh, they must be. Yeah. What a beautiful day to play golf. Yeah. Unusual in Portland. <laughs> Pierce. T of nine. Do you like that play, Elaine? Pitching out to the left? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with pitching out to the left. You know, whatever gets you through those trees. It is a long hole. Oliva on 10. And that's a long throw from Maria Oliva. Back to Gannon on 9. There are mandatories that force the players to go through the first of those trees. And you can see she's playing out to the left as well. Uh, there's open space out to the left. A lovely shot from our catch cam there on 9. Your final grouping. Getting ready to throw on eight. Mm. 
You make sure to have coffee before your rounds? I never drink coffee before I play. What? Ever, ever. What? Elaine? Oh, my gosh. I get so jittery. You have, you have zero caffeine? Zero. You know, caffeine is a performance-enhancing drug. Like, they've done studies on this. It helps you. It makes you better at everything. It does not make me no? better at anything. No? Okay, so I'll tell you a story. Okay. Long time ago, Great Lakes Open, hot, hot, humid. Uh, they had a drink sponsor. So I took this drink called... Well, I took this drink and I looked at it. It was like a lemon lime you drink, didn't think and I thought, oh, it. <laughs> oh, just refreshing. So I drink it, and all of a sudden, like I start sweating, my hands start shaking, and people said, "What do you drink?" And I said, "Just this, this drink called Kick." Uh-huh. And they're like, "Duh, Kick!" <laughs> like well, I thought it was like a soccer drink. <laughs> Anyhow, I was driving so drink. far. And I could not hit a putt to save my oh, life. Oh, okay. And All right. It's a double-edged sword, I guess. Exactly. Then. <laughs> and I'm trying to drink water as much as I can to get it out of my system. And it's like, I will never drink anything with caffeine. I'm so careful oh, looking funny. at labels. If I play without caffeine, I'm at least like five strokes worse. I've, I've tested it out. Well, you're addicted. I, That's it's why. Me. Addict. You're not wrong. Rebecca Cox. We're done with the coffee talk. There is an out-of-bounds line all the way down to the right side. Alan. So when you play a long course, Elaine, have some coffee. You play a short course, don't have coffee. You still have to putt. <laughs> still have to putt. Alan pushing it well down the fairway. So for right hand backhand, you see the players swinging it way out right, but there is so much gravity that that does pull the disc to fade to the left. Again, in second on nine. Got a lot of distance on that throw. Oliva on ten, second. Big ol' hyzer from Rhea. It's leaking left. Such a dangerous second shot there. There is... Green flag. And you love to see a yes, green flag. Yes, you do. I was worried. Back to Pierce on nine. Huge tee shot. Overturned. Long birdie look for Pierce. And now Corber on ten. This should be her third. Perhaps going around the right under that tree. Going around the left under that tree. Oh, Beautiful. she is going to be so happy. No sisyphusing on this so one today. So happy. She had a bad, bad putting experience <laughs> yesterday, was. but not to be today. Not. She is right there. Rebecca Cox, second on eight. Rebecca still had 340 into the pin. Comes up quite a bit short. Everybody else quite a bit closer. Gosh, Katrina, just 110 feet left, Elaine. What a smash. On a 615-foot hole. Wow. Ryan's second on nine. Oh, my goodness. That was inches away from banging some chains. Was it just long? I think it was a little bit inside. Gosh, what a bid. Oliva, birdie look. Sit. She's looking at it. Oh, oh no. She's There's looking. Those little knolls are so dangerous. She's Discs. now putting for bogey, so it rolled OB. Brutal. Back to nine. Excuse me, eight for Owen Scoggins. 280 left. It's still a little bit downhill, so that's fully within the range of her sidearm.
that works really nicely, maybe 20 feet from her target. Count it. It's own. Well, apparently 60 feet works as well, <laughs> too. <so. laughs> Seriously. Val, grab in range. You will see 250 on that bush now. And just a huge thanks to David Amman, who is hustling all over this course to provide those numbers for us. She's going right down the middle. Look at the turn on this. Oh, off the band? Right? I, I didn't Let's, wait, hear it. We'll get a replay. I saw it def like a little change well, in, in ac action, yeah. I was kind of impressed that the disc flipped up when she was, released it. I'm I like, oh, too. it's downhill. It's going to go left. But I, right I, I should have not discounted her ability to throw. Rolling back to Zuka replay. Yeah, look at it. Stand up. She loves her flippy shots. Oh, yes, yeah. you were right. Wow. Just a little tink off the band. What a bid from Manu Hano. I will have that for four straight birdies. Leader playing like the leader today. Awesome to watch. Well, she cleaned up her scorecard. She had a slow start yesterday right. with the first two holes. Cleaned that up beautifully. Rebecca Cox throwing three. 95 into the pin. Oh! oh. oh. Don't do that. Okay. It's all right. Yep. These players hitting the target from everywhere. That was Katrina Allen from 110. Easy birdie for Allen. And at 615 feet downhill, players are certainly looking to get a birdie. It's kind of a soft par, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Let's see what this one's averaging. Well, eight, yeah, under par, about two tenths of a stroke. Duhano for four straight birdies. Was Just there ever a so doubt? Steady. Yeah. You know, I was holding my breath a little bit. It's slightly downhill. It's 28 feet, just about circle's edge. This is what is winning her this tournament. It's putts like this. Absolutely. Scoggins. Birdie as well. This would be four straight for Own. I jinxed her. I'm sorry, Own. If you only had that power. Oh. <laughs> you did it again. She, she didn't sh shift her weight and stretch like she normally does into that. It's so important on the short ones yeah. not to do it too casual. And if you're going to take some spin off, then you have to make sure to continue to stretch and push your body there. So disappointing when you miss the short ones. Birdie for Allen, par for Cox, and Scoggins. And we got one more replay of this Valerie Maduhano drive. It, she actually gives it a little bit of hyzer angle, and it flips up nicely. Pink. <laughs> oh, wow. Can she keep it going? We'll find out on the other side of this break. If disc golf is your game, make Gotta Go, Gotta Throw your disc golf warehouse. With a huge selection of discs, bags, baskets, carts, shirts, and more, GottaGoGottaThrow.com has all the tools to take your game to the next level. Shop online or our Golden Valley, Minnesota store. Free shipping with all online orders over $75. Online or in-store, get what you need for the game you love. 
gotta go gotta throw.com your disc golf warehouse in the game since 1993 Ella Hansen putting for birdie all 10 and her putt has been so consistent you know every time I've watched her this year it's been just that same very casual looking stroke huge upgrade over last year Pierce on 10 with that Surge SS. Oh, She's been gosh. throwing it all over what the place. What a great throw. Full flight. Hopefully it's not behind that tree. Oh, we've got our 10-10 discs hot rounds. That's a good place to cool down if you just threw a hot round. Well, there's a tie for the hot round, isn't there? Oh, wow. A four-way tie at four down. Oh, and Jennifer Allen also coming in and a runner-up with a three down so far. Anduhano, T of nine. It's 600 feet. Players must go between two trees there that form the Mando and just get under the canopy and between the trees and up the hill as much as you can. <laughs> it's like a triple Mando. All the way to grandmother's house. Alan. Cat throwing the torrent. Boom. Yeah. Own. It's going to peel out left, but hopefully for an open look. Yeah, a lot of players are aiming to land out there to the left where they can have a less encumbered shot uphill for the second. Rebecca. A little bit of an early release, but a friendly kick at least. <laughs> Getting away with that one is Cox. Here, I'm flying this thingy lane. Yeah, we have to get through these trees, and then the players can go any direction they like. Obviously, the stand of trees need to be navigated around or through. There is a golf green over to the left. There is this hazard sand trap. Again, must be avoided. And then we've got a smattering of trees and bushes that guard the pin placement. And as you can notice, this can skip once they get into that circle range. No grass up there. Rebecca, with that tee shot, probably thinking par, best case. Well, it's a long hole. It's 600 feet, and there's a whole bunch of uphill. Yep. So hopefully she can pitch in for par from there. Rebecca just 175 in from there. Live look down at this beautiful Glendevere property. Very, very few birdies on hole nine. Really? 6% birdies. More than half the players getting par. One person. Maybe, maybe two. One person, Jennifer Allen. Missy Gannon is trying to get as close as she can. Just barely gets it over the golf green. Own oh, Scoggins, second on nine. Own oh, is 340 left to the pin. And she'll be throwing directly over the golf green and this sand trap, and she'll she have them. Yep. She doesn't want to mess with that one bit. She's an underrated smart golfer, you know? She really knows her game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just too far mm -hmm. uphill for her to get it in three, so. Manduhano, 325. This is going to be edge of her range as well. Uphill. Yeah. Par coming up most likely. Cat. Monster tee shot. She's just got 260. Back to 10 and Pierce throwing two. And you need a monster tee shot, but as well, you need an approach shot like that. Yeah. Tough to do with that mounded green. Sticks it in nicely. Katrina with a monster tee shot. Just mentioned 260. Yeah, she still has quite a few obstacles to navigate. A little bit of a low canopy that she's standing underneath, which is a feature of this course. Low canopies everywhere with these Douglas firs. 
and it's uphill, so as we were saying, a, a thin slice of air to get through. Maybe if you're two inches closer, it makes it easy. Oh, nice. Found a way. Got through those scrubby little rhododendron trees, which can snag the disc and prevent you from getting all the way up there. Cat well in circle one. Oliva. Her third. Oh, that's lovely. Great work. That's the par 511th there for Maria. A well-earned smile. Gannon over on 10 for Birdie. Oh, and it looks like the wind kind of picked that up. Oh, okay. That's sort of suspended up in the air. Rebecca, 175 in. Going too far left or short, maybe. Yeah, just behind that rhododendron on the right. Let's see what she's got left. Uh, circle's edge, 33 feet. It's so much farther than you think when it's uphill. Well, maybe not farther. Farther in disc throwing effort, <laughs> there you not go. in distance. Hills are just so tricky. They sometimes the basket just appears so reachable, and then you throw the disc, and it's very disappointing. Fowl's third on the par four, one twenty-five. Gives it tons of height, tons of spin, much better effort to get it close. Right around the same distance is own. Also throwing three. <laughs> Even better. That's one way to stop it. Who would have thought there would be this much sunshine? I believe they're still calling for showers and potentially thunderstorms later in the day today. Oh, don't say that. Uh, well, I'm not making the weather, you know. Mm, I know, I know. Thunder I can live with rain. Not a thunderstorm fan. Well, the women are getting the benefit of some gorgeous weather here. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Cox having to deal with this rhododendron. Yeah, she's not thinking about how beautiful it is, mm. I don't think. Save par. Circle's edge. It's just tough to be accurate and generate the right power from a stance like that. Yeah, the wide stance gives you very little leg boost compared to what you need and, and she's still throwing uphill significantly but she made the best effort she possibly could Katrina Allen for birdie and to grab a stroke on the leader and get solo second Get strokes on the field, birdieing this long hole nine. Cat five down on the day with six birdies through nine. What a difference from yesterday where she was six That's over. That's right. That's it's an 11 stroke swing for her today versus wild. yesterday. She'd be fighting for the win. She played like this yesterday in the front nine. Rebecca Cox, bogey. That early tree hit made this whole play very long for <laughs> Rebecca. Own. Dropping in par. Holding your cart handle while you putt. It's okay as long as your cart wheels are farther away than your stance. Really? Yes. Oh, all right. You can hold on to a tree behind you if you like. You can? Well, yes. As long as it's behind you. Huh. 
you cannot have a supporting point forward. Oh. Korber on 11. Oh, and that nestles that in the wood beautiful. chips. A break on the Disc Golf Network. Back to Glenn Devere in just a few moments. The Paul McBeth Foundation tries to help grow disc golf in underserved areas. Yeah, my, I was just a little bitty boy with hopes and dreams. Then those hopes, they manifested to nobody. None of this, and I mean none of this, could be possible without just anyone that's believed in this foundation or who sees this for the first time and wants to help. Yeah, my way had a frequency been way up, way up. Yeah, my way is too easy. It's a lay up, lay up. Yeah, my way. Thank you to anyone who's been a part of this. This is just the beginning. Katrina Allen. Push forward as far as you can on this hole because the second shot needs to be exacting. Mondujano, next to act. Full flight every time she wants it. I love the way she's throwing these slightly understable discs that just float and carry. Scoggins. Flex play out into the fairway nicely. And now Rebecca. And it's really funny. You get a bogey and all of a sudden your temperature goes up. <laughs> <laughs> so shedding some clothes, doubtless because the bogey got her kind of sweating. Yep. Great looking tee shot from Rebecca. And all the women safely out there into the green, but that's just step one. Step two is the interesting step. Corver. This is really a must-have birdie. It's short, I believe, 270 feet or so, slightly uphill, not too much in the way. It's sort of like a, a respite gift. It feels like it, doesn't it? A little break. Paige Pierce on the tee of 11. The big par 5. asking for it to hold and we are told it does not and it is out of bounds oh Paige just told you by five feet yeah, yeah you just this we need to just be quiet when yeah. she throws she'll tell us what's happening <laughs> Oliva back on 12 looking for a little bit of fade and she'll stay out to the right for a longer look at a putt back to 10 for Scoggins okay so she's got to navigate across or around a golf green and a sand trap and get it as close as possible to the basket, which is sitting up on a knoll. And she'll leave the bulk of the work for the next shot. Mm -hmm. Well laid up by own. Let's look down at 10's fairway. Basket pushing to the top. And you can see, in fact, there's two sand traps. Uh, one of them, the one to the right, is the one that comes into play more often. And that's As the players approach the green. Nathan Queen just grabbed the range for Rebecca Cox. Question, Going for second. Sorry, the question is always, can I get over the golf yes. green and right to it? Rebecca Cox, 300 to the pin. She certainly has the distance. Nice. Circle two. Back over to Pierce on 11, throwing three after the OB drive. This hole is over a thousand feet. Lots of driving to be done. Nice flip up Annie. That's going to go 500 easy. Oh, and it's just floating downhill on that turn and 
She gets tons and tons of distance. Back to 10 for Katrina. Like bonsai? Yeah. Cat going to the bonsai, it sounds like, from 290. She's close enough to those two guardian trees that I think she can get between them if she wants to. Bonsai kind of a nice, stable fairway driver. But she chooses up and over as the safer route. That's a cat line, isn't it? Oh. That's okay. Inbounds, at least. Definitely inbounds. It's, it's probably not going to be a birdie, but it sets up nicely for par. Oliva on 12. Looking for birdie from range, not to be. And back over to 10 for Madujano. 288 in. That looks to be a safer look at it. She got it farther forward. Oh, that's a birdie. That's what that wow. Madujano. Be five of the last six once that drops in. Ella Hansen. That was a birdie look on 12. Gorgeous step through putt. Here's a live look down at 10's green. Basket perched just right of the ball golf green. That mound, you can even see the OB line looming just beyond. Cat merch on 11. Oh, look at this she turn. She can zing that disc. Oh, wow. Full flight. Woo. Mash from Merch. I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I just threw it. It sort of went. Oh, third on ten. And that snags the hill nicely, it looks like. See your disc down there? I can barely see the basket. <laughs> <laughs> we have fewer pixels than you have at home, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm sure you all are watching on big screens <laughs> and great resolution. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, a long birdie look from under the canopy. I'm not even sure if it's possible. She's got such a high putt and she's immediately restricted right out of the gate. It's also a very, very dangerous putt to go for. Yep, she lined it up and just thought to herself it's not going to work. Rebecca Cox. Let's see if she comes to the same conclusion. It's a 40-footer for Rebecca. That was fortunate. So close. Good layup. Hmm, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Mandu Hano for a stroke on the card and a nine stroke lead. Gosh. And now there is something psychological when you have more strokes and than holes. there are holes left. Um, whenever I find myself in this position, I can just start to r relax a little bit if I happen to be feeling tense for any uh -huh. reason. You know, sometimes you are, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're just feeling great. Uh -huh. But other times, you know, when things are a little bit more tense, it's really nice to know that you've got a stroke cushion on every single hole, plus one left over to win with. Yeah, right. Ian, do you play Fortnite? I don't. My son busts out the Fortnite dances in my face all the time. 
And this tournament coverage is brought to you by Fortnite. The new season starts this week. You can check out the link in the YouTube description. Maria Oliva, T of 13. Oh, <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> Metal hit, but I'm told it didn't stick. Oh. Oh, the skip ace is the most special of aces. <laughs> Mondujano's approach on 11. That's our second shot anyway, I guess. Not quite the approach. Finds it, it's, you're nowhere close to approaching on 11 no, no, of the two not, shots. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is two shots, excuse me. Over a thousand feet. Hole 11 is our Eric Hole. Early recognition is critical. The official cancer prevention charity of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Alan with a roller. Don't know if that, yeah, that didn't look like it had much of a standing up angle, but it is climbing around a, and a, through a whole bunch of trees, so I would call that a very successful roller. Mm -hmm. Owen Scoggins. Oh, and I know why she put it on that angle. There is a mandatory tree out there to the right somewhere. Uh, Owen in the fairway safely. Rebecca Cox. Finding the golf fairway, getting a little extra distance. You can always count on a little extra scoot when you hit that uh -huh. ever so short grass. <laughs> All right, back down the fairway for Pierce. Throwing four. Long par putt coming up for Pierce. Hansen. That is a par save for Ella. Over on hole 13. Doing a little bit of work for that par save she as well. Had, she did. They're making their way down 11's fairway. We were talking scubers earlier, Lane. I got a text from the scuba master himself, Brody Smith, offering, offering <laughs> lessons up for us. <laughs> I will take a lesson on any of these shots that I'm not very good at. That guy's got to be the best in the world at that particular shot. He's the best in the world at a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> yes, he is. BVD, Vanessa Van Dyken for birdie. Her putting this week has been fantastic. But obviously finding a few problems yeah. on the course. All right, back to 11. Scoggins throwing two. Oh, that is high enough to get the full flight coming downhill. Nicely executed. Ahead on the green, Paige Pierce missed the par putt. Here's the comebacker for bogey. Double. That's a killer. Late in the game. 
drops Paige into solo fourth. She was already there. Manduhano second on 11. Making some solid progress down the fairway. And that mandatory uh, comes into play on the women's second shot. Oh, okay. So thanks to Zoe Andyke for giving us that course tip. Oh, hence the roller, roller for cat. Yes. Gotcha. Oh, unfortunate place to settle up for Allen. Throwing two. Now she can get her sidearm turned over sufficiently. It can carry down that hill. Look at that angle, Elaine. Great shot from there. Didn't lose much. Nope. Back to 13, Oliva drew metal off the tee. Here's the drop in birdie as a result. And a couple under par for Maria Oliva today, but nice. not quite enough to keep up with the leaders in the field who are shooting considerably farther under. We've got some five unders going. Cox throwing two on 11. Needed to turn that one over more. Had a lot more distance potential with some turn. And again, the, the slope downhill, that little bit of gravity, you kind of have to think about it when you're throwing and put more um, Anheuser angle on your release than you think. And so often when it's just a very gradual slope downhill, you don't immediately think of that. Your body sort of goes to the normal release point that it has, and then things like this happen. It leaks out left. The green off to the right here, down in those trees. These would make a fabulous Christmas tree for like <laughs> New York City Square, right? Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> Christmas tree shopping in Oregon is fantastic compared to California. <laughs> Where you've got nothing. Yeah. Well, you've got trees from Oregon, yeah, most likely. Oregon, you just drive in any direction, you get a Christmas tree for 15 bucks. It's like, you know, 15 feet tall. California, that's like $200. Yeah. Merch. Just fading left from the get-go. That'll leave her a very long look. Mm -hmm. Looking back down the fairway at Missy Gannon. Beautiful shot from our catch cam. I see Evan down there behind Missy. It's a little shy from Gannon. Back to 11's fairway. Allen throwing three. Katrina, 385 left. Well, that is in her wheelhouse. It disappeared into the trees. It did. 150 left, apparently, according to David. Back to 12 for Pierce. Almost beat that last one for the field goal birdie, but still a look. Could be a birdie still. It still could. Scoggins, 370. With the downhill, she could make it work. Yeah. Circle two bid. Edge of circle one. Nice shot from Owen. Let's see what we got. 45 feet for Owen's look. I don't think it's the distance. I think it's the big fat tree in her way that <laughs> will be giving her pause for thought. Val just saw that number on her bushnell. And what great positioning she's got. The big gaps, huh? Yeah, she, she's obviously thought about this course. She's positioned herself well that she's got a higher percentage probability on this attacking shot to the green. However, she does not get it downhill far enough. 
I expect better from her. <laughs> I mean, don't you? After watching her all week? Well, it's, it's actually a shock when she isn't, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, pinpoint accuracy. Right. Rebecca Cox. She's throwing three from 270. Oh, we got a flappy bird. Oh, nicely done, Rebecca. That was well executed. You could see her throwing an understable disc that just held that line. Long birdie look on 12 for Gannon. Oh, just shy. Drop in par coming up. Ahead to Oliva. There's a mandatory that she's got through perfectly, and that angle is exactly what she was looking for, to get shape. maximum distance. Shape on that was perfect. Back to 11's fairway. Allen throwing four, looking to salvage par. It wasn't obvious to our eye, but looking back, you can see that tons of space to approach this forearm. Paige Pierce from Circle Two, Birdie Look. Finds metal, but not the bottom of the bucket. A par coming for Pierce. Same green, Cat Merch, putting for Birdie. And Get she it. Does find the bottom of the bucket. Oh, no. It is a long birdie look. What do we got on this one? Oh, 38 feet. Not as long as I thought. Tickles it. I drop in par, and that will, won't lose her. Might, might lose her stroke to own, who's got a chance to move into a tie for second place. Oh, we'll have to see how constricted Owen is with respect to that tree. Oh, yeah. It might not quite be in her way. Yeah, go into the stagger. Must have a look at it. Just a little tickle on that one for own. She'll have a little work on that comeback par look. And everyone's least favorite disc golf words. You're still out. Yep. that one home nicely and salvages par on 11. For the hot start, a bit of a slowdown for Scoggins, four straight pars. Allen looking for one of those as well. Cox for a stroke on the card. Birdie look. While they walk to 12, we're going to check out. Oh, we got one more pep coming, don't we? Parlor from Hondo Hano. Now the walk, and now a look at the own Scoggins putting form. This should be interesting. It really should. <laughs> <laughs> so what I love is that she pushes off from her back foot, and she 
has a lot of wrist, but she releases it in that wobbly manner. And I, I can't quite figure out why it wobbles so much. <laughs> Off axis torque, you know, not coming from a, a clean plane, possibly. But, but yeah, why does it go so straight then? Yeah. I, I love the back and forth wiggliness though. Uh -huh. She's stretching out. Her arm continues to stretch out when she releases. That helps give it the nose up that all of her putts have. Yeah, Des Redding putts like that as well. It's, uh -huh. it's just wobble, 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 and I've never been able to figure it out. So Steve Rico on the MPO side has that, that wobble as well. So funny. It, it's effective for all three of them, though, isn't it? Well, those putts putt with a purpose. These shoes move with a purpose. For disc golfers, designed by disc golfers. Idio Footwear. Head over to idiosports.com. Check them out. Back to 14, Oliva throwing two. There is some out of bounds long. No risk of that from that beautiful shot by Maria. Over to 12, Cox coming off the birdie on 11. She's been throwing that disc so well all weekend. Gives it some Anheuser angle, and it has a very reliable hyzer, or fade back at the end. What, eight feet from the basket? Lovely. Mondu Hano, shooting a clean five down right now. Looking to make it six, and a throw like that will definitely give her a very high chance. Katrina. That's not coming back. Yep, she looked away. She knew she had overturned it. But I wouldn't count her out on that putt. Mm -hmm. She is famous for her long putts. That is cat range. Own. Sneaks around the very last guardian tree, and that's well within own range. Yeah. Valerie Mondujano, she is rolling. Hole number one. Starting off with that as your first putt. Whew. Save par even. Over on five. Getting her birdie streak started. Ripped off four in a row after that bird on five. This was an amazing shot. Stands up just enough. Feeds in hard. turn and the tick off the band. Bink. <laughs> <laughs> and on 10. Yeah, that was a stroke gainer as well. That particular shot puts her up on the hill. Mondu Hano putting her stamp on the game. Looking like two Elite Series wins, at least for her this year. It's going to take a disaster to not take this one home. Well, she just needs to keep that consistent drive, that consistent putt. No need for her to look at the scores. She just needs to play her game. Allen from 40 coming up short right. It's a pretty good little battle going for second with Cat and Own, just separated by a stroke. And then you got a little fourth place battle as well. Pierce and Cox and Gannon. Oliva also in the mix on that. So some battles to watch, even if first is locked and up. And some significant holes coming. Scoggins, you called it, Elaine. Oh, and back on the birdie train. That's a clean five down for Scoggins. Mondu Hano, birdie look. 50% birdie rate if this goes in.
Rebecca Cox to match that birdie. And go back to back. Right. In a tie for fourth, finds Rebecca Cox. Back over to 14, Oliva. Oh, this was well short. Long birdie look. It was a little deceiving from our angle. Yeah, I thought you got circle one. It was just short, but not to be. Gannon. Doing what Missy does best, make putts. Solid round after the bogey start for Gannon. Back to 14, Hanson putting for birdie. A rare miss. She's been putting 75% from circle really? one. Really? That's a huge improvement over last year. Got to be proud of that. They're pulled down a Widowmaker. So. And don't stand under it when you pull yeah, it down. Yeah, that's a good point. It's moving. Oh, yeah, you can see it up there. So a Widowmaker is a branch that's already fallen off and just kind of dangling in the other branches? Yeah, it's a it's a unattached branch, yeah, that oh, um, wow. is still suspended up there. And the danger is if there's a gust of wind, it could fall down with little warning and, you know, have a very negative effect on anyone standing below. That was a big one. Well done by the staff. And that's one of the um, responsibilities of Seth Munsey. In the Disc Golf Pro Tour, he's in charge of things like safety. safety. And, oh. Yeah, he goes around and has a oh. walk through the course and looks for items that might be hazardous to players. Was that Seth? That was not. Okay, that was okay. uh, That was Phil, I am told. Phil DeLone. Thanks, Phil. Good looking out. I imagine Seth is busy warming up the players right now. Oh, yeah, good point. Missy Gannon, 14. Little bite sized chunk for Missy off the tee. Back over to Oliva. Upshot on 15. On that woods hole we saw at Mondohano, which is filet yesterday. Oh gosh, that was an incredible shot. Pierce on 14. You need a turnover on this. And that disc did just that. Corver look for par. Nice lofting putt drops in. And if it didn't, it wouldn't land very far by. Truth. Back to Rebecca Cox coming off back to back birdies. We're on hole 13. Woo! Almost Maria Olivia did that right there. Oh, she sure did. Gosh, that was close. Mondujano. Hey, when was the last time we had a FPO ace on cam? I cannot think of one. The only one I can think of is recent Hol history. Holcomb, but that was a long while ago. At SFO. Scoggins. Great shot on. Players standing in the bright sunlight are throwing to that dark green in the shade, a little bit uphill. They, it's really hard to see what you're throwing at, and the trees are a little bit randomly dispersed, so you make your best aim, your best guess, throw it hard, and ask for the disc to slip through, through the guardian trees. That's well short and left for Alan. Advantage Scoggins on that battle for second place. Back to Hansen. Par putt for Ella. This is hole 15 with Ella. And that was just inside circle one for Hansen. 
Back to Gannon on 14, throwing two. And this is a big throw. It's slightly uphill. Players probably need 300 feet or more, and she does that. Great shot from Gannon. In great style. Have you looked at Lawrence's scorecard? No, I have not. <laughs> One birdie, all pars. <laughs> it's a funny balance to the rainbow of the rest of the scoreboard up there. Allen. Got hit down by the first guardian tree, so that's about all she can do. Yep. There it is. Consistent. Yeah, you just feel like it's such a boring day of golf <laughs> when you do that. Yeah, it's got to be frustrating. She's certainly got the distance to birdie all kinds of holes here, and uh, only one was successful so far. Swing it back to Pierce, throwing two on 14. I mean, it's not under the pin, but it's, that's okay. Good enough. Back to Manduhano. Birdie look. I gotta look at the stats and see if she's Gosh. missed. I think she missed one. One in the circle? Yeah. Looks like. Nope, 100% C1X. Yep. 0% C2. Huh. Owen puts it in for Birdie as well, and that gives her a solo second over Katrina Allen. Also, Manduhano, 10 stroke lead. Birdie for Cox, that's important as well. Rebecca gets solo fourth over Pierce, it looks like. Allen with the par, drops into solo third. Natalie Ryan's second shot, 14. Well, that's looking an awful lot like a birdie. It is. Oliva. Got it. And that, I think... Uh, rules out Oliva's chance of getting onto the podium. And just next weekend, we have the Beaver's Day Fling, post-produced all weekend long on the Disc Golf Pro Tour's YouTube channel and a live finish for the first time ever, a miracle of modern science. Live? Live. Live, way out there in the middle of nowhere. I can't, it's down in a hole by a river, are surrounded they, by trees. Are they putting up a big antenna? I don't know what they did. I don't know how they made it work. Miracle workers. If you're not a subscriber, Get it's not it. going to happen. Yeah, that's right. It's a Silver Series, so only on the network for that finish. And Milo always has great finishes. Lots of playoffs, one-stroke wins, and Milo just such a treat to watch. And if you're watching on YouTube today, you can subscribe to the Disc Golf Network. It's cheap. It's like cheaper than Netflix. Cheaper than Netflix, and I watch this a lot more hours than I watch Netflix. Even when I'm not here getting paid to. I watch it at home. <laughs> Missy Gannon. Doing Missy Gannon things, making putts for Birdie. Back to the T for Cox. 14. Ooh, look at that turn nicely. Successfully through the Mando. Looks like there could be a little bit of wind out there. Hey, Zoe. Looking a little blustery out there. What are they working with off the T? You're right, we've had a few miles per hour pick up on the wind here. From the tee, they can't really tell that it's much more of like a right to left turning into a headwind because they're blocked by that line of trees. It might feel like there's almost no wind at the tee, so this is gonna be tricky. Once their discs get out of the chute, they could turn over easily. Well, Valerie Mondahano completely misread the wind and it just played havoc with her disc. 
own making the adjustment, putting it farther up the fairway. Yeah, that forehand rode the wind beautifully down the fairway. Allen. She's hopefully been taking notes and determining what adjustment she needs to make. No, that is just going to straight on fade. So inbounds when making the hole play very long. Well, it does really take birdie out of the question. You think so? Paige Pierce, speaking of, looking at birdie ahead on the green. As usual, no commentary required. Oliva, back on 16. Ah, the early hit. A oh, little roll away, hopefully not too far for the par look. That might have turned out okay, it's hard to say. She, yeah. she hit something early and it certainly took some oomph off it. Looking down at your final grouping and gallery as they make their way down 14's fairway. It's a 610 foot shot, so ideally you need to get that right hand curve to give you, you know, a, a decent chance to get your approach shot in at the basket. Now we've seen Katrina Allen and Valerie Montejano with their disc going left. Farther ahead, Missy Gannon on the gauntlet, hole 15, just trees everywhere. Oh, she's slicing and dicing. A birdie look. Back to 14's fairway for Rebecca Cox. Oh, we have an OB drive from Rebecca. Oh, I see it. Just he can't do anything right. <laughs> this <laughs> course, you have to manage your disc so carefully, even when it looks like there's a lot of space. Sometimes there isn't. So she will pitch in for bogey from there, most likely. Hurting those fourth place chances as this woman is looking to chase her down on the tee of 15, sitting one back of Cox. Long birdie look for Pierce. Back to the fairway, Scoggins throwing two. Well, she threw with all her might and it just didn't get there. Yeah. Oliva. Oh. You were right, Elaine. This was close. Yeah, I think that tree nudged it in the correct direction and sort of rolled it. up. Nice. 14's fairway, Mondujano throwing two. Yeah, a lot farther back than she'll have practiced. So it's pretty much just a straight shot. Just let the disc fade in as the disc wants to. Not bad. A circle two look. Merch on the tee of 15. Hmm. That it was did not good. turn, but it looks like it went that forward. That's a whisker. Yes, it... it <laughs> It was a very, very friendly kick. Yeah, it was. Back to 14 for Allen. Yeah, she got kind of in the woods there. Hopefully that's not too wide. That looks fine. Back to 15, Gannon, a birdie look. What a fantastic putt. Between the trees, had to give it some hyzer angle. A circle two making a turkey for Gannon. She is moving up to the boards into a tie for fifth with Pierce. Oh, excuse me, Cox. Pierce, one back. Hole 14 traverses this golf green. We start on the near side of the trees and traverse over to the far side of the trees. So you can see the gallery moving up to get a closer look for the putting that's going to happen shortly. 
right in the middle of your frame should be Katrina Allen. She's about 115 feet into the pin. Oh, excuse me, 85 feet. It looks like... Yep, it is cat. Nothing you can do from there but take your par. She's done that perfectly. Got yeah. a Ryan cutting for par on 15. Bit of an up and down day for Natalie. Currently sitting at two over par, down four spots. And that was Owen Scoggins just pitching up. Rebecca Cox just pitching up. And Manduano, 55 feet on the look for Val. I guess the question is, is there a low ceiling preventing her from really going for it? thought that was in. Brutal. Few inches to the left and that would have stuck. What a look. What a bid. Rebecca Cox. This is a double bogey look for Rebecca. Is it? No, bogey, excuse me. not help Rebecca's podium chances. I'll give Missy solo fourth for the time being. Phone throws in par. Allen par as well. And Mondu Hano. That disc right there almost slid in for birdie. Consolation par instead. Not that she needs it right now, but it, it's always nice, right? Well, it's all about the player rating, right? Yeah, there you go. Wonderful form. She Gosh. uses her entire body, pitches it forward, gives it a good wrist snap. Just an inch or two left, and that's the it. height was right. Yeah, just could have gone either way if the basket had been in an accepting mood. Still a clean seven down through 14 for your leader commanding lead 10 strokes over this field you know and i gotta say after her round yesterday i was thinking wow i mean i i know she can do better on hole two hole one's tricky hole 18's tricky you know is she just going to shoot a couple down but uh obviously she had other ideas in mind she was going to do everything from yesterday plus more gannon on 16's t slow motion it's a bit low Will it get some skip? Maybe I'll make a putt. Mm -hmm. She says maybe a putt. They are marked. She is marked circle two. Sitting three back of the podium positioned Allen. Oliva. That was on 17, her second shot. Uh, your scores. A giant spread that gets pretty tight. It's like watching Kona back at Waco two years ago. She just dunked all over the field. When was the last time someone won by 10 strokes? Then the Elite Series. Statman, he'll get on that. Exactly. Mondo Hano, 15. Well, it is absolutely wonderful. See, a jinxter. I it, it is wonderful <laughs> to watch someone throwing as consistently as she has. Owen oh, Scoggins. I believe she was one of the two birdies on this one yesterday. Yeah, she knows a route with a big turnover. That is not turned over enough today, though. Gets but lucky. It gets through all the trees, and, you know, sometimes on holds like this, getting a three will get you an advantage over some of your nearest competitors. Sure. Katrina. Word from production. The last time someone won by 10 was Tatar at Jonesboro just this year. 
cat shot was looking great. I thought it was continuing to turn over, but found contact with the tree. Rebecca. Flying this 15, we'll see if we can find the intended lane. There's a couple of them, I believe. So you can go off to the left there if you throw a sidearm, or you can stay the way the drone is flying if you throw a backhand. And if you throw a backhand, you want to just keep it turning to avoid this last big tree. But, you know, I think this is one of these holes that you practice it a bunch and it's hard to get a reproducible shot. There's a lot of trees. They're very fat. Yep. The wind could affect your disc slightly and increase your chances of contacting a tree. But meanwhile, Valerie is a long way back. Looks like the putter mid turnover approach. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yes. And look at that, there's out of bounds there. I had yes. didn't really realize how close that out of bounds was. Somebody got it yesterday on the MPO side. Yeah, it took me by surprise too. It's it's close to circle's edge, if not closer. Allen second. Under the target. Looking pretty good for Allen in that third place. The closest battle we'll have here looks like Scoggins and Allen for second. Rebecca throwing two. It's okay. and Val walking down the fairway. Looks like Mason had to go get to his tea time. Yeah, he's been gone for a while. Yeah, has he? <laughs> well, I imagine a, there's a significant amount of walking to get back to where he needs to be. Oh, right. So if you go too many holes, then you'd have this like really long run through the course. Own Scoggins. Well out in circle two. This is 55 feet for Birdie. A mate gives her a two-stroke cushion over Katrina in that second-place battle, but it just wasn't there, was it? it? There's just no way to get from here to there. She looked around a few angles, and there weren't even any good own opportunities. Yep. She well, needs this putt to prevent a blemish on her scorecard. Yeah, that's about <laughs> the only consequence of missing. Tons and tons of chain. Well, those last two putts. There goes the double digit win for now. We'll see if she can snag it back. Rebecca Cox to save par. Yep. Yeah, an early tree hit on this hole is just trouble. Scramble mode. Own a par save of. Nope, I'm not going to do it. Puts that one in. And Allen dropping in par as well. Mondu Hano, a bogey, loses a stroke to the card. It doesn't matter. Three to play, nine stroke advantage. Paige Pierce for birdie. Maria Oliva for par. 17, oh, bogey there for Oliva. That will drop her out of her seventh, oh, sorry, into a seventh place tie. Gannon. Gosh, she's all over it. That doesn't go in.
with only a nine stroke. Yeah, it's, it's a nail biter. Advantage. Whew. I mean, th things can happen in the last couple holes, but uh, I don't think we're going to get a swing of that magnitude, but very, very interesting for second, yeah. third, and then the other spots yeah, that below fourth, that as fifth, well. Six is a pretty good battle. So keep an eye on those. And then Cat Merchant Oliva. A little battle there for seventh. To 17, we go Ganon. Great tee shot. Pushing into the tree line where the basket is tucked. There. That is your final grouping making their way to 16's tee from the live drone cam. There is a birdie opportunity on 16. It's 330 feet. And it's, again, one of these make-your-own-adventure holes where there's a number of different ways nice. and paths from the tee to get to the green. Oh, Mason Ford's back. What? He's got a little while to tee off. Oh, there's a cut today. There's more time. <laughs> and he played pretty well. Oh, okay. I'm sure Art, Art and Mom Duhano are watching at home. Shouts to them. Mason tees off in two hours is the word from production. Enough time to hopefully watch his lady take this home. Own leaves it high. That's rare for her. It She's is, usually a low thrower. Yeah. She didn't quite get over on it. Just wasn't tracking on the line she, that she had intended. Advantage Allen. A chance to grab that stroke. Move it to a tie per second. She hits that wide right gap. Well in circle one for Allen. Scoggins at 75. Rebecca Cox. She's going for a more right at it kind oh, of line. Good tree. <laughs> Katrina just 18 feet away from the basket. Rebecca nestled at 31. And now Maduhano looking to snag back that bogey. She dropped on the last. A chance from circle one. Paige Pierce throwing two. Hole 17, par 4. And the, the meat of that hole is really that second shot. There's a lot of trees to miss. It is. She, I believe, hit some of the uh, overhanging branches. Maria Oliva, feels light chilling. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, it's been a day for Maria. Yeah, it's, it's exhausting to play disc golf. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She has fought her way to a one-down round today into a tie for seventh with one cat merch. We'll see who takes that one at home. You know, some of these courses are just more mentally draining than others. Sure. And the courses where, like, you can't throw one shot just with wild abandon. In every single shot, you have to think about shaping it. You have to think about out of bounds and wind. It's just more mentally exhausting. Owen from 75 gives that a great bid. Not to be a chance for Allen to move into a tie for second place. And so Anne Dyke informing us there was a tailwind on this particular hole, so that could explain why many of our players had these drives that leaked a little bit left. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Cox. Oh, I 
She can't see my Bushnell spreadsheet, but it's definitely her. <laughs> Wait, but. I love her putts when she gets them flatter. That's a tie for fourth with Rebecca Cox, tied with Missy Gannon. Mondujano, snag back that stroke she dropped on the last. And it must be nice to feel the disc go in all the way after those two almosts that yeah. she's had. Cat just inside 20 feet for the birdie look. Big putt there, ties her with Scoggins. Two to play. Good little battle brewing. And they are on the way to 17. We're jumping ahead to the fairway again in second. Ooh, advantage Cox there in that fourth place battle. Corver, T of 18. is done it is that should break the tie with Oliva speaking of here she is on 18 she's woken up from her nap and is throwing a disc <laughs> now <laughs> and throwing it very well Gannon's third on 17 Ella Hansen, T of 18. She likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was, that was, the, that was great. the positioning she was going for, obviously. Yeah. Katrina, roller on 17. She did this yesterday. That is so daring to put a roller down with that, those guardians. Unbelievable. But she gets it. Will it flip? Oh, yeah, it's it will. It's a decent angle. Peels out right before that tree and at the tree line. And, you know, getting into those that tree line is so important. Rebecca Cox. He's just going to try and power it up there in the air. It's going to land short of the tree line. That makes for a much tougher second shot. I feel like Rebecca could stable down a little bit with her plastic, Elaine. Do you think so? Well, that particular throw is a little bit low, so it's hard to say. Yeah. I feel like she's been controlling her disc pretty nicely for the most part. Not as well could, as this woman, of I course. I like she's leaving a little <laughs> distance on the, on the field is what I'm saying yeah, with that. Yeah. You know, Manu Hano is getting great distance. Yeah. She, if, that, that if Rebecca flight. just threw something slightly understable. Yeah. Uh-huh. I wonder. Scoggins. Taking the outside line, Heiser. And it is a headwind. 
with a little bit of right to left, Zoe is informing us. So that's okay. probably why Rebecca may be disc to something a bit more stable. Oh, that makes sense. Ahead, Pierce on 17. Birdie look oh, off the band. Oh, that was such a good effort. And one more ahead to Corver on 18. 18 is perilous. There is out of bounds all the way down the left. Jim Oates asking for that to drop in time, and it does. She is in bounds after two throws on 18. Gannon on 17 saves par. Big putt for Gannon. Hansen on 18. Pitches a forehand around the corner nicely. Oh, she's running. Oh, no. Didn't come that, back. That got too far forward. Yep. Oh, we got some ducks. Preening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mallards. Back to 17. Scoggins throwing two. She is short of the woods. However, it looks like she's lined up in the biggest gap. So great positioning. This is 550 feet. Again, it always seems it's like it's slightly uphill, playing longer. 270 in for own. So very reachable. She left that a bit low, but it has oh. a nice skip on it. Great time for a great shot for own as Cat just tied her. Get some nuts from the hubby. Rolling back a Zuka replay of this park job from Scoggins. Rebecca Cox from the same fairway. A little bit closer at 2.30. That lined up as well with that biggest gap. So well-placed tee shot. Oh, catches the last tree on the way in, but still very makeable putt. Yeah, those last two trees are quite close. Head on 18, Oliva. She looks like she's in a different climactic zone than Rebecca Cox, doesn't she? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh. oh, it needs to step up. Not cut roll. Hang on. It cut rolled. OB. Brutal. Back to 17 for Mondu Hano. I think she said 190. She's got two caddies. They're just like lolling around <laughs> instead of <laughs> taking her work. distances for her. Right? 210. Yeah, a little bit of a low overhang. So it looks like she's disking up to a mid. Lovely. Ooh, once it passed the tree that was right in front of her, yeah. then it looked all good. It did. Alan should be next to act from the fairway. She has 180 left on the hole after that roller. I wonder what kind of angle she gave herself over here. Well, she know what she was in the first two rows of trees. Oh, that's a nice clean alley into the basket, yep. isn't it? I like that play. What a gutsy roller tee shot. That's... Uh, you know, <laughs> even in my rolling heyday, I don't know if I would have been brave enough to try and split those two trees with a roller. The creativity to even think about that. There is the f green of 17 somewhere in that... Standard trees. What beautiful terrain that they've had to work with. Jeff Spring, assisted by Dustin Keegan, making a course in these incredible stands of Douglas firs with this beautifully manicured grass all around it. Jeff took a number of trips out here to work on this course. It was iterated over quite a lot to arrive at this fantastic layout. Rebecca Cox for birdie. She told you right out of her hand it wasn't to be. 
range. He will stay tied with Gannon for the time being. Sitting in fourth down two spots today. Mondujano. Birdie look. To get to 21 under par. Piece of cake. The lead is 11 for the moment. <laughs> Double digit lead back on the menu. Katrina. Birdie look. Currently tied with Own. And that is Own's red disc. Very close to the basket. So it needs this to maintain the second place tie. And out. Move back into second place. Tied with Allen with one to play. Rebecca Cox drops in par. Gosh, that's well played by the final grouping on 17. Three birdies and a par. It sure is. It's a long hole with a lot of obstacles. Oh, Corver barely in bounds. Now throws Slow three. Slow down. Slow down. Go in. Go in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it went from a slow down to a go in. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> why, did, why did you put it in? All these people wanted you to put it in. <laughs> That's fantastic energy from Jim. Missy Gannon on 18. Oh, wow. She bit off a lot. And bit off exactly enough. And I th think there may be a little bit of headwind. Hansen pitching up through OB with her second, so throwing five, looking to give herself a putt for six, and she's done that. <laughs> and a bogey doesn't hurt Ella. She will stay in. Actually, it will hurt her one. She'll be a solo 12th. Pierce on 18. And she is way over that pond, <laughs> like way, 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 way over it. Not even flirting with it. Looks like Mr. Peanut pond on the elephant hole. Oh, no, the giraffe hole, thank you. The giraffe hole, yeah. Um, we'll get a chance to see that graphic, I'm sure, but uh, the, the um, layout it definitely looks like a giraffe. Where's our map production? Come on. There we go. Look at that giraffe. It's perfect. It's, it's even got spots. <laughs> it does all the way up the neck. It's just great. So thank you for to Melody Bailey for pointing <laughs> that out to the world. That is so cute, but it's just so giraffe-like now it's when you a, look at it. It's a great shape for a finishing hole, it turns out. Yeah, and Zoe Andike has reported there is a headwind on 18, making it that more challenging for the players to get over the pond on their first shot. Now you saw Missy Gannon just barely get over the pond and mm -hmm. you know she's got a decent amount of distance on her. And then the fairway gets very, very narrow and it's got two mandatories. And so you must stay to the left of the mandatories as you go up the beginning of the maximum flight. Gannon, the drive safely across the Pond throws two, and she's safely in the fairway. Missy Gannon currently tied for fourth with Rebecca Cox. Ahead on the green, Korber. A birdie finish. It is a par finish for Juliana, and that will give her a top ten finish at the Portland Open. That's a nothing to sneeze at with this talented crew of people that we have. After four days, her score is right where she started. <laughs> it's like nothing <laughs> happened. <laughs> Valerie's score, very far from where she started. 21 under par and a 10 stroke lead over this huge talented field.
You don't knock your fiance. You get a hug from your oh, fiance. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be so proud of her. Yeah, great, great round, dude. <laughs> Is that what Eric says to you? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> Alan on the T of 18 doing some vacillating between a couple different discs. Uh, depending on what the wind is doing at that particular mm. point in time. It looks like Cat is waiting for Paige to clear on the fairway. So Paige after that monster tee shot, throwing two. And how much will she bite off? Oh, she's going for it. So looking at scores. She actually has two strokes over seventh, and one could get her a tie for fourth right now. So a birdie helps and a bogey doesn't. Well, hurt. she just busted out a throw, made sure it was turned over enough, caught a tree, so no harm done. Should pitch up for birdie, yeah? Should definitely be a short pitch up for birdie. That's Cat Merch down on the fairway, ahead on the green. Kids, putting. Oh, you get a basket and some discs and... You add to children, and it's just it's nonstop action. Oh, nice one. Somebody signed that kid. Missy Gannon throwing three. 18 fairway. She looks like she's a long way back. like a par finish for Gannon. It seems like it was a cautious play after she just barely made it over the water. You know, then she's throwing into the skinny neck of the giraffe, so not surprisingly, just a cautious play. Get your par and end. Allen tied with Scoggins for second. The battle to watch on 18. So she'll be the win dummy. Or the win smarty. Yeah, that look was at a that smarty. shot. Way, way, way over the pond. <laughs> Throwing that torrent way down the fairway and a well-earned smile from Katrina. Mondujano looking to close it out. T of 18. Nicely over the pond. Oh, big tee shot. She says, uh oh. Oh. Oh, I'm hearing claps. Zoe, what happened to that shot from Owen Scoggins? Well, I'll tell you, Ian, I'm going solely off the crowd because it's just a little bit downhill for me. I'm thinking she's in bounds. Wow, I wonder if you skipped off the pond. Rebecca Cox, a birdie here would give her solo fourth. Good tee shot. Great start. We will take a break while they make their way to those shots back in just a few. designed for me to be able to throw hard, throw consistent shots, and know that it's not going to just glide and sail past the basket. I just think it's a, such a unique uh, flight and a unique distance and it's a unique spot in the bag, and that's why uh, I think it's becoming so popular. Welcome back to Glen Devere and the finish of the Portland Open. That's your chase card making their way down the fairway. 
Oh my goodness, look at Owen's drive. <laughs> that living on the edge. Her chance for a second still alive. Well, the footing is going to be the problem here. It's going to be an uphill run up. Stand still forehand. That's a wise choice. Especially as she throws into the neck of the giraffe, as it were. Still waiting for the fairway to clear. It could be a matter of everyone's facing the wrong direction <laughs> because oh. the second group is putting out. Ryan oh. with a huge putt to finish. Putting out in style. That was a putt for seven, unfortunately. Yeah, she was standing right on the OB line. And she ties Korber in ninth place. Merch. That's a par finish and a seventh place one for Kat Merch. She fought her way back nicely after early struggles at Blue well, Lake. Well, Blue Lake just was not her course, obviously, <laughs> and this one is. <laughs> True words, Elaine. Paige Pierce puts in the putt for a birdie finish and a tie for fourth for Rebecca Cox and Missy Gannon as Gannon slides home par. All right, back to the fairway for Owen, throwing two. Great, safe shot. Just what she needed to do. Rebecca Cox, next act. Birdie here gives her solo fourth, a par, a three-way tie. She's lining up a sidearm, just going for safety. Distance doesn't mean anything if it's out of bounds distance. And it's really not the longest par five. No, it isn't. Oh, that is a good looking shot. It wasn't too high. It wasn't too turned over. Mm -hmm. Hopefully a, a window from those trees. Yeah, she got on the other side of those, I believe. Oh, cool. There's a look down at your gallery and final grouping. Bright pink right in the middle of your screen is Mondo Hono right next to Mason Ford planning her second shot on the finishing 18. Mason is saying, hurry up. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta warm time. up. <laughs> I think yesterday uh, she went out of bounds on the second shot. There is a headwind. So she'll make the calculation and try to keep this in the fairway. Low enough. Oh, cut roll. Cut. Keep cutting. Keep cutting. Keep cutting. Green flag? Wow. That, that was a lot of... That was a really bad throw on her <laughs> part. It was... If you're going to be conservative, throw it flat. Yeah, you know, yeah. that low. That was exciting, if nothing else. <laughs> Mason Ford enters the final day in 15th, if you were curious. I, I was. was curious. Yeah, I yeah. looked it up. Alan. This is a big shot for Katrina. A good one here gives makes it a very easy birdie. An out of bounds throw gives it to Scoggins. And I gotta tell you, she's way up the fairway on her first shot. She must keep on the left side. There is another mandatory tree up there. Is that one right in front of her? Well, there's two mandatory trees. Great throw. Advantage Katrina in that battle for second. She's definitely got an easier pitch up. Yeah, let's see how far Own is away. Own, oh, she's only 170 into the pin. So, very manageable. Walking up the giraffe's neck to the head, or the basket's right around the ear hole. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Yeah. 
The ear flap? You know, gi <laughs> giraffes have floppy ears. Yeah. Manu Hano somehow inbounds after her second throwing three. And she did not get the progress up the fairway that one would expect. Yeah, 350 left for Val still. Just pushes that shot OB. Look like a, a bogey finish for Manduhana, which hurts nothing but pride. I think if you can walk out of this course with two bogeys on the day and a whack load of birdies, <laughs> you're feeling pretty happy. And a, yeah, a huge win. Look like it will be nine strokes, maybe eight at worst. Own throwing three. Most likely needs a birdie to maintain that share of second place. As Cat just 120 to the pin. I love the attack she gives her sidearms. Oh. Well, it's in circle one. Or close to it. And you know that it, if the tree wasn't there, it would have been right up there. But uh, unfortunately, the tree is very real. We'll get to watch one more own wobbly putt. Hopefully it's for birdie. Rebecca Cox, 160 in. Is she actually playing the skinny gap? She's uh. She thought about it, but threw a great shot here instead. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's gonna give her solo fourth with a make. Big putt coming up for Cox. Right hand side of your screen should be Katrina Allen. Getting ready for her third on the finishing 18 par five. Scoggins. How what a unexpected. Shank. Yeah. How unexpected. Ah. Now Owen can lay up and get solo second. Right? It's just never over till I, it's over, I, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I really. And Katrina's been playing so steadily all day. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that was just a bad wind read or just maybe a flip of the wrist. She let her wrist roll as she released it. Mm hmm. And corrects here at least. We're dropping oh, that's, there. that's definitely in. Moving to solo third. Hopefully Justin is checking U disc and knows to tell Ohm to lay up because that elevated pin you could get a roll away. Oh well I, I think Owen is watching the action with interest. I don't know if she was a U disc checker during the round or not. Maduhano. Which is up for bogey and a win. Scoggins just a foot inside circle one. And although she could lay up. It's a pretty safe go for it. It's reasonably yeah. level. Backstop. Only worry I would have is coming up short and rolling back down the hill if you bounce off the. Yeah, if you bounce off the koozie. Mm -hmm. Looks like she's having a discussion about strategy. Yeah. Okay. Crisis averted. 
she didn't look like she had her heart in that <laughs> one bit. <laughs> You're right. In fact, she may have been just trying to lay up and <laughs> got a little much. too much energy on it. Rebecca Cox for a birdie in solo fourth. Oh, Rebecca. Missed opportunity for some points and some dollars there. Own second place by yourself. What a wonderful result for Owen Scoggins. Absolutely. And Katrina Allen, third place. And Rebecca Cox will drop in in a big tie for fourth. And your 2022 Portland Open champion, Valerie Mondujano. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Glendevere, Stumptown Disc Golf, the Disc Golf Pro Tour. I'm pleased to present your 2022 Portland Open presented by Dynamic Discs champion, Valerie Monduhano! two season we got to hear your first few thoughts uh honestly frustration coming down the green and bogeying it i wanted a birdie so bad and then i just threw two shots really bad so that's what my first thought was frustration but um yeah i'm, I'm pretty proud of myself just because i felt like the style of the course wasn't really my style and i proved to myself even bigger courses than i'm used to i can still take on the challenge and still uh, succeed in it and with these conditions and a brand new course what was the the number one or even top couple of keys that kept you so consistent this weekend? Um, my mom always likes to say shot for shot, and I felt like that was something I really took and uh, kept going with. I kept just playing on the next shot. I didn't worry about a couple holes later or the next round. It was just, what am I going to do in that exact shot? Wonderful. Well, any last encouraging words or shout out to sponsors? Um, yeah, first shout out to my family back home for watching. I really wish you guys were here. Um, shout out to Mason and Alexis for always cheering me on and being by my side. Thanks to my sponsor, Dynamic Disc, Foundation, Lucky Ace, and Birdie Few. And there you have it, the conclusion of the Portland Open. Congratulations, Val. Thank you. Welcome back to the booth in Milwaukee. Excuse me there. What a performance from Val. It was just so wonderful to watch her wire to wire win. Just that same controlled drive, the same steady putt, and it was just a putting victory. Yeah, it looked super repeatable, super, super consistent. Play the word for her performance there today, all weekend long, honestly. We have the OTB after show on the other side of this break. We got more Val, more highlights, more Elaine, and an OTB shot of the day. We'll catch you there. <laughs> Cat wants to hug you super bad, but I want you first. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Katrina Allen, and I'm here with my SP Vortex. We ran a limited number in the SP Plastic to commemorate my sixth PDGA Player of the Year. We also incorporated my new logo. The Vortex is a understable fairway driver. Instead of forcing my mids, I like to use this. I like to pop it on some hyzer, uh, let the disc do all the work. Lots of glide, understable, great in the woods, great for easy distance. You can find these at discgolf.com slash Katrina. 
Tyler Classical Academy has been incredible. These kids are super excited for disc golf. I didn't learn about disc golf until I was in my mid-20s, but I'm so happy that these kids do and they're getting the chance to try it out. So this is a fantastic program and a fantastic opportunity for our school to have professionals come in and take over the PE program for a day and expose these kids to the joys that they can have and just watching a disc fly through the air. The youth is really going to come in in a strong wave to the sport of disc golf. We are dedicated to the game. Developing technology and providing data that helps you take the next step. Whether it's your next training session, league night, or major. Because we believe the best way to grow the sport is to push the sport. And the best way to do that is together. We're focused on the future to make that happen. Check out the whole lineup at ClashDisc.com. I like to get my weight back, keep it back. I'm almost always finishing on my tippy toes. Think about it as arm gives you the line, fingers and wrists give you the spin. My one goal is to stare at that chain link and let my muscle memory take over from there. Valerie Mondujano, your 2022 Portland Open champion in commanding fashion. Precise throwing, perfect putting all week, all weekend long. There is rarely a bad shot she threw. The accuracy of her drives was amazing. The accuracy of her putts was unparalleled. Accurate shots like this. And I love this one where that perilous putting green, she just sticks it right in the middle of that hill to take away that putting pressure. Gosh, looking at stats here, strokes gained putting. Val, pretty close to 10. The next closest was just over five. So just an it, outlier over the field. Yeah, it was it was rare to see her miss a putt. I think she missed two putts <laughs> this um, last round. Uh, I don't know if any of them were from circle one. They may have both been from circle two. Yeah, we saw earlier she was 100% from C1X. Did she finish out that way? Uh, she missed one for C1X. Wow. Skinny with all the trees. What a day from that woman. I just checked out the strokes game. T to green, fourth in that stat. So the only competition there, Paige Pierce, Natalie Ryan, and Katrina Allen. What? kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Well, and then when she got to the green, she putted it in. Yeah, she did. Um, more consistently than the other women. Gosh, talk about the rest of our field here. We had Owen Scoggins. You know, I don't think a lot of people probably picked Owen for a Glendivere type course. I don't think people picked Val for a Glendivere type course. That's also course true, isn't either, it? Either, but yeah. Owen certainly um, 
having a tremendous performance, really controlling that disc. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our top two players are not the top two distance throwers. The top two putters, huh? They are the top two putters. You're right. And I loved what Valerie said in her post-interview. She didn't think she could win on a Glendivere type of course. And, you know, I I remember having that realization, Uh you know, one day when I did particularly well at a course at one of the worlds is I thought, oh, I'm going to lose strokes on that course. And then I gained strokes. And it was like, what? <laughs> um, so I really identify with Valerie's statement. I think everyone back at home should also yeah. take that to heart, even though you think the course doesn't suit your style, you know, just work at it. And you might find that if you don't make mistakes, you stay out of trouble, you make your putts, you can do better than all your competitors. Yeah. Very true story. Adding Val to a very short list of two-time Elite Series winners in the single year. Just five women to accomplish that. So we got a five-time world champion. we got a two-time, two-time world champion. we one got a time. one-time world champion. We've got the hottest player on tour. And we've got Val Mondahano joining that list. And wow. the season is still about half over. Are we, I think we're in a halfway part. Yeah, we're headed to Colorado for the match play championships here in a couple weeks. That'll be interesting. Up at Bailey Disc Golf Course, have you checked that out? I have not, but when you say Colorado, I think elevation, and that's a bit of a different game. 8,000 feet, I think, is that course. Somewhere between seven and Mm 8,000 feet. So people are going to have to be uh, busting out some flippier discs up there. Absolutely. Put away all your stables. Take out all your flippies. (laughs) My friend Kristen Dietrich likes to call, he likes to call the Sidewinder the Mountain Destroyer. You know, if that tells you anything, (laughs) how you change your discs when you head up to Montana or Colorado or anything like that. Valerie Mondujano. She is, oh, she is not in the clubhouse. She's Shortly. Fixing her hair? Yeah, I think so. But we'll have a Grant Zellner and Mandu Hano interview coming for you shortly. Before that, though, I, we had a, I had a Redditor question for you, Elaine King, uh-huh. talking about kind of courses on tour that you you played when you were touring. Right. What one gave you trouble? Where did you find success, and what were your favorites? Trouble. I'll, 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 one of each. Um, Emporia. Just yeah. everything <laughs> about Emporia gives me trouble. <laughs> um, it, the wind is... Uh, a huge problem. I've been living in the woods now for 11 years. Uh So the wind is an adjustment and Emporia, you just need to throw farther. You just absolutely need to throw farther than I do. Uh, What was the second part? Success. Where'd you find a lot of success? Um, Always at WR Jackson. Oh yeah? At at, at WR Jackson, I've been able to like push my way into, you know, the top group Uh these later years that I've been playing on that particular course. And I love Idlewild. Oh, love it, love it. Is that the answer for your fun question? Your, your favorite course, have the most fun playing on tour? <sighs> no, I got to say it would be in Vermont playing, you know, Fox, Fox Run, Run and um, Brewsters. Brewster. Yeah, I think that is, is the most fun. I don't necessarily do the best there, but I had some great success there at Master Worlds. Oh, nice. Played Fox Run better than I thought. So just like Valerie Montahano, you, you don't yeah. need to necessarily be the big arm to have the results on a big course. Keep it in bounds, right? Make your putts. Exactly. She is ready. We're going to send it down to Portland and Grant Zellner talking to Valerie Montahano about her incredible win. Valerie Mondohano, I don't get to say this very often, a wire-to-wire victory on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Not only that, shot the hot round of the day in this final round. Did you feel nerves at any point during the course of the entire tournament? Um, Yeah, I think I felt nerves almost every shot. I think because in my head I was like, I want to shoot 10. So it was not a race, you know, it was a race in my head to see how well I could shoot on this course. That's why I think I was so nervous. It, re- it wasn't the crowd. It wasn't, you know, what was on the line. It was more what could I shoot in this course. Was there any kind of thought given to the fact that you protected such a large lead coming into today's round? Any thoughts of playing safe? Any decisions you made differently than perhaps you did yesterday? There was some thoughts of it where it was like, oh, maybe I should lay up on this putter. Maybe I shouldn't try that drive. But then I was like, why? That. 10 down popped up in my head. I'm like, I'm not going to achieve it if I lay up. Your confidence is obvious based on some of the decisions you're making on the course, some of the choices in terms of line or disc to throw. What is it about your game that's working so well that's giving you that confidence? 
Um, I think it's a little bit of everything. I keep saying it, and I think it's just putting the practice into it. And I'm not able to throw forehand, so I think having to practice at any shot constantly gives me a little more confidence knowing that I have it in my bag. Mason, nearby, as you came up 18, also your sister, talk about the support system that it takes to succeed at this level. It definitely does take a support system. I feel like if you don't have one, it's hard to vent to people or to people to understand what you're going through at times. Uh, them, they know what it's like to feel all that pressure. They know what it's like to fail at things. And, you know, so they're always there for me in different ways. If I had a bad day and they know I don't want to talk about it, they're not going to talk about it. So it's very, uh, I'm very fortunate to have them. You had another really cool moment there on 18, not only with Mason being able to join you and Alexis. A little boy from the crowd was ushered over near you as you stood on the fairway at 18 waiting to play your second shot. I'm not sure if the cameras captured it, but you got to have a moment with a fan, and that looked like kind of a special moment. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I mean, if I can just talk to somebody, if that makes their day, I'm going to do it like it. I, that used to be me. I used to look up to a bunch of these players, and I was like, it would be so cool to talk to them. I don't even know what I would say at the moment because I'd be so stunned to even talk to them. But um, it was a very special moment. I hope he really enjoyed it, and I hope he really enjoyed just watching in general. Um, one day I know that's going to be him up there. Well, yeah, and on that note, talk about being a, a star on the FPO circuit and having little boys coming up to you and wanting to meet you and get your autograph. Yeah, I think that's amazing that, you know, the boys are watching. It's not just the girls. You know, the guys can take notes from the girls, and I think it's very amazing to see because, like, growing up, you'd always just talk about or hear about the guys um, and them looking up to us. It really shows me that we're doing something in the right path or, you know, people idolize us. Three days ago, we talked about the fact that this tournament marks roughly the halfway mark of the 2022 season. Do you have any breaks planned in your schedule for the 2022 season? Other than that, how do you intend to stay fresh during the second half of 2022? Honestly, as of right now, it doesn't look like we have any breaks, but I definitely want to clear the schedule. Even if that means missing two events, I'd rather do that to have uh, a bit of a breather. I don't like to go back-to-back consecutive two months of playing consistent tournaments. So I want to get a break. We just have to look through the schedule and see what we want to miss. You mentioned how tired you are right now, yeah. dealing with the time change, going back and forth across the country, calling family members at strange hours of the day. How else do you stay fresh when you don't have the option to take a week off? You get used to it. You get used to no sleep. <laughs> She's a two-time winner on the 2022 Disc Golf Pro Tour. Valerie Mondahano, a champion today. Congrats to Val, and thanks to Grant for that interview. Any uh, jumping at you from that interview? Uh, it, yeah, I, I'm identifying with her being tired mm -hmm. and the stress and the grind. And so if, if I had any words of advice, I would say, you know, plan your breaks. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to go every weekend. Yeah. And perhaps you shouldn't. And we were talking earlier about injuries. Yeah, right. And a, a great way to prevent yourself from getting injuries is to have planned breaks and planned rest mm -hmm. throughout the week as well as throughout the months. Yeah, a lot of disc golf injuries are RSI, you know, stuff. You can give yourself yeah. some time to calm down, your body recovery. You can last a lot longer on tour. Like Chris Dickerson is doing that right now, taking a little break in between as well. So smart stuff. Elaine, it's time for the OTB shot of the day. I think I know which one it is. Do you? I have no clue right now. Is it the basket going? Oh, Oliva? Yeah, it's got to be right. Let's see. Oh, there's two basket doings today, though. It's the one it with was the, this basket it's doing. The, it's the one with two camera angles. <laughs> <laughs> Mondu Hano off the band. Wow. It's also your winner, so it's a good selection there. Let's see it one more time. What a beautiful flip up. Right on target. Got it. What a day for Valerie Manduhano. Nine stroke victory. For Elaine and myself, everybody on the ground, everybody in the production booth, making this all possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you a little bit later for the gents at 3.30 Pacific. Thanks for watching. Catch you in a bit.